coming up on the next episode of the Celsius Pod. Do not say I was I was not crying during this movie. I am ending this rumor right now. I did not cry. I did not cry. Do not gaslight me. I was not crying. <laughs> Guys, I am happy to officially announce the Rowebi arc has started. It's allowed to announce that. What the fuck are you talking about? I get to announce I that. just, I leaked it. It's begun! Aiden, summer has begun. And thus begins the Rewebi arc of the Celsius podcast. It's true. Beck, where are and you? And let me tell you. Beck, where are you filming from, though? I am filming from an undisclosed island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And what's the temperature there? Because it's 75 here. Dude, I got a warning on my phone today being like, there is a heat wave in Palo Alto. It's reaching 104 degrees. I don't know if it so, was 104 degrees earlier, but maybe. I believe it. All right. Well, the weather here is 81 degrees, but it feels like it's 100 degrees. Because of humidity. Do not, do not go to Hawaii, bro. It's so hot. Uh oh, undisclosed location just became disclosed. No! Oh, I leaked it. Bang. Oh, man. You fucking leaker. All right. Well, I guess let's g jump into what we're watching. Yeah, because Beck has to do shit. So he wants it to go fast, but it's not going to yeah. go fast. It's not going to go fast. Because we have a lot to talk about. Let's do the individual stuff and end with the big group ones. I like it. I like it. Who wants to start? Um, individual. I'll start. Okay. I got like one individual thing. Back will start. I watched the Peanuts movie. Wow. And this movie is fire. True. So, it's about Charlie Brown. I don't know if you guys know who that is. I'm familiar with I'm the concept. Familiar with man. You're familiar with him. So it's like the normal like Peanuts people, but there's a new girl that moves to town and Charlie Brown is like I need to date this girl, and he tries all these things to impress her, but something always goes wrong, um, and it's sad. But then the girl's like, wow, you did a lot of cool stuff. You were very nice. And she gives him, like, a pencil, and the end. Wow, what a great movie. It's a fire movie. It is a great movie. What a fire. All right. And no review on Letterboxd. <sighs> Very disturbing. I did review it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Reading. No, because because Uri was like, you, you don't review a lot of things on Letterboxd. I added one after it because he kept pestering me for it. Okay. Oh, yeah? Okay. Let's see. What did you write? Yeah. I don't know. All I, I wrote... see is that you added Corpse's Bride to your wish list. No, it's a Peanuts oh. Review. What, what a, a simp. simp. I see. <laughs> what? Wow, back. Like, the Corpse's Bride is not as good as you might think it is, just so you know. I just added a ton of random shit to my list. By the way, well, guys, Beck got Letterbox Pro, so that means he's kind of a loser for that. Yeah. Wow. Yes. What did Letterbox I Pro will... even like accomplish? What, even what is get? it? Let me let me let me explain to you the different tiers of the <laughs> Love to hear it. I don't know. The one thing is, like, it lets you add stuff to your watch list and see what service it's on, and it, like, tells you when shows on your watch list are, like, added to services. I mean, that's kind I of just thought that was cool. But I feel that's like the you could also... I got it. I feel like you could figure that out by just, um... What's it called? Looking it up? Googling it? Yeah. 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 Like it's just every time I try to Google it, it takes, like, ten times the work because I have to, like... I want to watch this movie, it's not on the service. I want to watch this movie, it's not on the service. But I, it's like convenient to just cl click watch list services I own, and it's got a list of everything. Fair enough. I guess that's something that, that, that's a feature. Yeah. Um, yeah, anything else you watched back? Um, no, I just, wa we watched a ton of group stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, um... You watched Inside Out 2 again, didn't you? I did watch Inside Out 2 again. How and was let me it say, the second time? The post credit scene, not worth it. <laughs> yeah, because we all forgot, we all missed the post credit scene, because why would there be a post credit scene? Um, yeah. 
No, no, because like it was like the main credits at like some scenes, and then like the longer credits. The longer cre- credits usually don't have a scene, but it did for this movie for some reason. It did for this movie. It's so true. that was kind of annoying. You gotta find out what but... Riley's dark secret, and it's not what Aiden thought. Which and I thought it's... I thought it was her being um homosexual, but alas. I, yeah, that would have been way better because all we hear is him say, I uh Riley burned a hole in the rug. No But he says it in such a raspy voice. I could only make out that's what it was because I we had read up read the synopsis of it. I thought it like, I thought it, it was, was gonna be like he he turned out to be like a high pitched girly voice. It's like we totally burned a it hole wasn't in the rug. That. I thought that was, yeah, what it was no, that literally was what I thought. No, he has like he has the same dark like voice. That's stupid. But um yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Riley being gay, that would have been a bit too much for the Fox News of the world, Aiden, so I guess so. But um uh is that it? yeah. Are you back? That is all I watched. There I watched a lot of group stuff. Wow, he watched things with his friends? Imagine. Let's what break. a loser. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I can talk about some anime. No! You, no, you guys you guys reminded me. I had to talk about so many anime. Let's get into our first group thing, at least <laughs> for for you guys. You'd watch Ruibi? No, he didn't. I didn't. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about oh, other anime. Yeah. Other no, anime. We're gonna, we can get into our first, oh, me and Beck's about first About, like, a year ago. Oh, no, he's... Do you guys remember me talking about a show called Code Geass? Mm-hmm. No, I don't. I Not at all. I think I do. So, there's the, there was this show called Code Geass. It was a very highly rated anime. Sure. I watched it, and I just found out two days ago, there's a sequel series that's coming out right now. And the first episode came out, and... It kind of makes the big problem I have with a lot of sequel series where it it had such a good ending where everything came together and then like it extends on a bit after this. Like, yeah, it ends so good. But then they're like, you know, all the work that the main character did to like save the world. No, they just came back and now the world's all dead like 10 years after. That's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty good so far. Uh, it's like, now they need to take down, instead of the Britannian Empire, the Neo-Britannian Empire. Ah, See, it's Lord. different because they put new in front of it. Oh, you mean Neo, okay. not new? Neo well, the Matrix? Neo means new. Neo the Matrix? Not Neo the Matrix. Not Neo the Matrix. Sounds like But, a like, problem. the whole thing is it's like these two brothers... Well, they're like, f- like freedom fighters, sure. and they're like trying to prove themselves to the main resistance. So they take down like these two evil leaders. And they're like, yeah, you can join the resistance. We're gonna break into this prison, um, and they're like need to get a- escape the princess of Japan out of the prison. But the big twist of the episode is that one of the brothers is actually the princess in disguise. Whoa! And He's cross-dressing. You have a problem no, with that, like, Ray? No. There's like some like cloaking device that she uses. Turns out the person that they think is the princess is actually her friend, so she's trying to break out her friend. Ah. Oh, um, but it is pretty good so far. Wow. All right. And so you you watch are you watching that in Crunchyroll? No, I'm pirating it. Wow. Can someone talk about Crunchyroll? I will be joining Aiden's Crunchyroll account now that he has it. Oh yeah, if we well we can only have one person per uh per like device. Or one person like, like, streaming at, at the same time. Yeah, I'm yeah. not I'll just it's like the Steam library thing. Yeah, you're yeah. just like when Aiden says I'm done, he'll put in the group chat, I'm done, and then Beck will know I can watch now. Yeah. Okay, and then the two other things I watched are My Hero Academia, which I'll skip talking about to spare you guys. No, you can talk about it. A, you can talk about I'll, it. No, I'll do a big end of the season one. Okay. Because right now, I this is the one thing I hate about anime, is like when you're able to binge it, you realize, oh, them taking a long time to develop stuff is cool. It gives a lot of detail. But when you have to wait a week, and one week is literally them just 
doing the first two seconds of a battle, you're like, this is so boring. True. Like, it's so, right now, all the episodes are all just set up Beck, and stuff. Beck it's kind of annoying. De- Beck has now defended binging, so he's now, now changing his art. <sighs> okay, well, it's different with anime versus, like, a drama show. Like, I, mean, I think really. House of the Dragon Weekly is really good, but Anime Weekly is bad. I'm, okay. I mean, it depends. It depends, Beck, on... Uh... Aiden, if you were watching Ruibi and you got a six-minute episode every week, would you be happy? That's different, because that one's <laughs> from 2013 and is dog shit. But, it, like, <laughs> if it was, like, not you're not airing just, like, what, like filler or whatever like that, then it's okay. I, it, it, right. depends on, it depends on the anime and the context. Okay, and then the last thing, I, I started watching JJK, but Nicola's is a big JJK fan, so I'll just start talking about it when he's back. No, that, I like it. it's the bit that you talk about when he's not here to make him feel bad. No, that's not <laughs> nice. That's why, we're to, that's why we're watching Rui B while he's not here, so he doesn't have to listen to it. Yeah. Same thing with Steven Universe. So I gotta yeah. go. That, I gotta go watch. There's all the shows we can't talk about with Nicola. We watch it during the summer. Yeah. But all um, right. Well, that's all I've been watching. Wow, Uri, do you want to do your uh, personal do, things? Or do you I'll do my. Do I'll do my big, big personal thing. So guys. Okay, I'm leaving. I'm leaving mine for the end because it's the okay. summer arc. So. Yeah. So guys, I have been hyped. For this show since last oh. last summer, because guys, when the first season came out, I thought it was like a pretty good season of television, and I thought it was pretty good. But then I kind of forgot about it. But then when I heard season two was announced, I was like thinking, I should probably watch the second season since it's pretty good. And then I watched it like all, and I watched this, and the second season might have been one of my favorite seasons of television ever, and made me Crazy. rewatch the first season. And I realized they're both. Not only great seasons of television, there are amazing seasons of television, of TV. Wow. And so I was incredibly hyped. I rewatched so many episodes of season two a lot. And um, it finally came just two days ago at night. I, I, I knew I really didn't want to go the binging route because I when I been, when season four of Solar Opposites came out, I watched it all in like one afternoon. I felt yeah. so shitty and empty after I did that. I also did that, and it was it did feel like that, yeah. And so I was thinking, I have to watch this in increments. So I watched the first four on the na- night came out, next three yesterday, and the final three today of The Bear Season 3. Whoa, The Bear! Yeah. And so, guys, that the, what's, funny, what's so funny to me about The Bear is, like, people call it, like, one of the best shows of all time. But it's so hard to convince someone to watch it to be like, no, it's like cooking, but it's like really interesting. It's like cooking. really no, it good. Sound, it sounds so boring. I do not want to yeah. watch it. I'm so sorry, Harry. I, it, like it, every time I hear about it, I'm like, this cannot be interesting. But then if I watch it, I'm like, wow, this is very good. I mean, I just heard like, it sounds really stressful to watch. Like yeah. not in a good way. I love, I love being stressed by movies and TV. I kind of fucking love it. I love feeling like I'm about to die watching something. That's you. Sh- no, you should not feel like that. I, I don't love think. feeling like I love <laughs> having- <laughs> feeling like I'm just about to die having a heart attack. And guys, I think on at least one of the episodes of the season, I did almost like have a panic attack just watching it. And I loved TV that can make you feel very intense. And it's <laughs> it's like it's like trauma cooking and like amazing character arcs all blended into like one into a like show but so, into a puree, into a puree. Chefs, but um right. so that's the chefs do it that's not okay so season three <laughs> con- continues to show why this show might be the best show on television n- n- currently but i'm i am gonna say this it shows it is the most arty season of the show so far it's like it goes very artful with the directions of the episodes because there are episodes where it's so stressful but then there's episodes where it's so like kind of peaceful and like so amazing because like there's they have both of them in the mix but i'm gonna say this i do think it is the worst season of the show so far Uh but it is an amazing season of television nonetheless 
However, season two was just so amazing. But it, let me explain it. Because long ago, a, a few months did ago... Did John Cena ruin the season already? John Cena oh, did man. not ruin the season. They had some kind of weird guest stars. John Cena just appears in like one episode as like one of the cousins of one of some of the main characters or something. And he is John. He plays as John Cena, right? No, he, he just plays like, as one of the main characters. He's, he's not. related to the characters in the, in the show no. as John Cena? No, he has a different name. <laughs> Is it Ricky? Sammy? Always it's not. It's Sammy Fack. And, um, so yeah. But they have a lot of interesting guest stars this season. In, like, they, they have Josh Hartnett play, like, a really small role, which is kind of interesting. And, um, they have, there's a lot of interesting guest stars. Because now the show is so big, so many, like, people want to get on it. And so they're very easy to get, like, major guest stars just to appear in, like, very small roles, which is kind of nice. But this season was a little bit over the top. Let me just explain m- how, how this season kind of goes. So, Love yeah. in the first season, we kind of, like, covered, like, the guy as he comes back from, like, the world of fine dining to, like, take over his brother's, like, failed restaurant after his brother's death. Second season is him trying to upgrade that restaurant into, like, a very fine dining establishment so he could make it his own. And the third season, him actually doing, working as a fine dining establishment. But season one kind of ends on like a high note where they're going to going to like, you know, like they're gonna build the new restaurant. Season two ends on a more of a sour note for him, our main character Carmi, as like he's he's get he get, on the night of the opening night of his restaurant, he gets stuck in like the walk in and um he kind of uh, loses everything. Wait, the, f- the f- yeah, he and he loses everything. <laughs> kind of close to him because he, he 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 kind of has a tantrum in the walk-in and he his girlfriend hears and she she kind of just leaves him for that why does he get locked in the walk-in how did this because happen? they they tease it all season that he needs to call the fridge guy and they say you gotta call the fridge guy but he always gets distracted at one point and then when he goes in to, in the fridge in the final episode of the season he um he, get, he gets stuck in it and they kind of tease it because it was broken or locked the lock thing yeah and so this season starts off, he's kind of essentially become the villain of the show in a sense, where he's like, mm. Beck, why is this fucking smile you're doing? It's throwing me off. <laughs> I don't know. It's, he's it just having a great fun. time hearing about I'm the, having a good time. The bear. Okay. Is- okay. Um, and so he does this thing where he's essentially become the villain of the show, where he's become like, because a, a big part of the show is him kind of dealing with the trauma. And they have this scene where, because this show does a lot of like kind of, fast cuts of where what the person's thinking a lot of like thinking it's very like very intense and also does really long tracking sequences a lot of the time and so a a thing that keeps cutting to is like having like a trauma with a boss that kind of tells him that told him you're nothing you're nothing it's a guy it's played by jeff winger from community which is kind of interesting wait really yeah he plays his very traumatic um very abusive boss and he keeps having this kind of um like flashback to him and this season he kind of becomes a sort of abusive boss in this third season Uh and um he's like he's saying i need a list of non-negotiables that has to happen every a new menu every night a new that's crazy crazy. and um he sort of infects this kind of like mentality to others people to the other people working around him like the other main character in the show sydney you know she kind of really wants to work with him but he's not really allowing her ideas to be put in and um he's kind of just like kind of pushing her out where he's taking control of everything and he's sort of infecting the same mentality of him onto her because they do this really interesting thing where it's um in season two they have um like a a shot of like a zooming up on him while he's having a panic attack outside and they repeat the shot for her kind of signifying how she's becoming a lot like him and she doesn't like that Mm. Mm. And, um, and, but I, so here's what I'm going to say, because season three and season four were filmed simultaneously. So unfortunately, the season has the effect of feeling like a part one season to a season uh... four part two, which is always kind of annoying. You get that kind of the spider verse effect where it's like you're getting these things that are they're setting up and you got to wait till like they kind of like dropping like the thing feel fulfilling the characters in a way yeah because yeah. A lo- they leave a lot of things kind of unresolved by the end of season two that they don't ever really fix 
this season. This season is more of like, um, I saw a comment really describe it kind of well. It's like a DLC for season two. It's like, um, it's like, you just get a lot of more backstory for all the characters. And because one thing about this show is they will never kind of like repeat a same episode twice. Like, I really, when I watching, when I started watching season three, I really expected, um, like this. Wait, in other words, a different menu every night. Whoa! Wow. <sighs> Chef's kiss for that. Um, oh, chef's kiss, like from the bear. Like from cooking. Yeah, like from from the thing. But um, we'll never repeat an episode. Tw- um, um, like an episode um twice. But they'll always have like recurring like flashes of what the character's thinking, and they'll always kind of reuse that from the same episodes. They'll use. They'll have like scenes from a previous episode, and they'll just flash back to that because the character's always thinking about those types of things. And one thing about the show is that it's such a real show. You really feel like you just have fun time watching these characters interact and like hang out with each other. And the dialogue just feels so real and just so human. Like you really feel like it's it's kind of like a documentary in that sort of aspect. And that's really interesting. And um, as I said, this season, it's the most artful the season has ever, the show's ever been. Because the first episode is essentially just a bunch of like flashes and like, um, I guess just a lot, a, a really long, this episode can be described as a really long montage of different like scenes from our main character's life. And because we get like a backstory from it, there's barely any dialogue in this episode. It's just we see him working and finding out about his brother's death and like all that stuff. But um, it's just like a, it's a really masterful episode. It's a very calm kind of episode because it's reflecting over like the end of season two where he's lost everything. But now it's just kind of like showing his backstory. And that's really interesting. Season two and season eight of this ep, season eight. Yeah, season eight of this episode of this season. See, episode two and episode eight of this season have been just um take place in one spot. Essentially, the whole episode mostly takes right. place in the one spot. Like a bottle episode? It's a bottle episode, but usually in a bottle episode, you, like, maybe, like, it could be, like, one location of, like, a house or something. But not only this, it's in literally just one spot of a place. Not just one place, it's just literally one exact spot. Like, it takes place at, like, the counter of, like, of the ki- of the kitchen. And it takes, and it, it conveys how, like, um, people more... As more people come into the restaurant, showing how the conversation gets more chaotic and just more insane as it goes along. And episode eight is a birth episode where one of the main characters gives birth to her child. And wow, that's really re- ran out of episodes that fast. <laughs> um, no, but it, it was this House of the Dragon. Yeah, no, but it's like her <laughs> talking to um just her and her mom. It's basically her and her mom the entire episode. It was like I think that was probably one of my favorite episodes of the season because it just it was really intense because how births can be really intense that way like the beeping the heart monitors and it, it was really intense it provided like some great closure between that relationship with her and her mom and I really liked that episode and um another episode three is a, feels like a really long kind of music sequence of um how of just them working that's his thing. <laughs> Um, a, a really long music sequence of them just kind of the insa- insanity of the restaurant. And um, just kind of like that. And it it is, I said. It's, so like, are the characters like singing? No, it's just like, like it plays musical? like dramatic. Because of some curse that might have been put on them? No. Um, it, it's just like, it's more like dramatic music. Like, like you know, I guess um, it's a really famous, like it's just like, like orchestral kind of music as the insanity keeps building up in the re- in the restaurant and um mm. it just shows like this season's really about um kind of confronting kind of um your past in a way and um how that reflects back on you into the present and you have to deal with that or else it's just going to get kind of worse which is a really True. cool theme and all that season six was a really good episode where it's actually sydney the actress for sydney it was her de- directorial debut for the for the oh, show oh wow and um, Very it's cool. it's a backstory episode on only one. It's like a full. It's a backstory episode on only one of our characters and how she ended up working at the restaurant in the first place. And mm-hmm. um, something the show does is that our the brother who died and kind of left the restaurant to his brother. He is basically the core of the entire show. He's like 
why characters act in the present is kind of because all the reflections back on him. Even people who don't know him, they knew people that know him in the present, sort of reflects who they are before he died and after he died. It's like a reflection of those two things. It kind of provides backstory to why people are the way they are. And he always does like a flat, he always does like a flat, we always get some sort of flashback with him on an episode six of every season. That's very strange. Why is it always episode six? I don't know why, but it's always been episode six that they do this on. So I guess it, I I do like when shows do do can stay consistent. Like if you always have a Christmas episode, I I would appreciate if the Christmas episode is always kind of like the same episode of a show. It there's no there's only one Christmas episode of the show, but I'm just saying if a show has like that sort of. Consistency. Well, of course, there's only one Christmas episode. They uh, they only do one one episode each time. Yeah, but um. But there's, I'm not saying there's a Christmas episode for this show, but I'm just saying if consistency oh. is key for a show, I like when shows like stay like that. But um, so they always do like a sort of flashback with the brother on episode six of the season. We get to see like kind of the different facets of who he was, and like he was a very troubled individual who kind of had like an interesting past, but he always wanted to help others, and it was like really beautiful. Where um, yeah, where it's like people really love this guy but he he seems like he had trouble loving him kind of himself and he has a lot of issues and we really see how his presence infects kind of the world of the bear and that's sure. really interesting but overall to say this was a really good season however every episode this season did unlike the other two it did have like a more kind of episodic feel to it in a way where it's like we did kind of just get like it was a really something different every episode, which we did get in season two. There was more standalone episodes in season two, and they kind of did that some more this season. There was a character who kind of I did feel was left on the back burner this season, where he was more focused in season two. But what he did do was very interesting, and he had like a really impactful moment in in episode three. And um, it was just like, you, you get to see more of this world, and that's always a fun time, because it kind of reminds me of, you love shows that where you just enjoy watching the characters just interact with yeah. each other. That's, that's one, it's a perfect show if you just like watching that. Like, you know, Aiden, The Office, you just love seeing all the different characters in that show kind of interact with each other, because like, sure. you always know it's going to be some sort of TV gold in a way. Yeah. But I know Beck what you could think of. Um, Ted Lasso was kind of like that in a way. And, yeah, and um, I mean, Game of Thrones, like the final season. What I loved most about it was just seeing all the, all the different characters talking to each other. Yeah, it gets to a point you know it's really good TV when the characters that could be just talking, and you really enjoy watching that. Yeah, that's and, why uh, I liked It's Always Sunny because like half the episodes were just them arguing. Like, th those those were the best parts of the episodes when it was literally just them yelling at each other. Yeah, yeah. And I that's what I feel as a show. In this show, they yell a lot at each other. There's a big rift between two of the characters this season that they were, like, to, they, they had some arguments in the past two seasons, but this season, after what happened at the end of season two, they left off on a really big rift. And that's where that goes throughout the entire season. And, um, which is, it's interesting. I do feel like they're going to probably bridge in season four. And I said, season four, you, it does feel like that's what all of this is kind of building up to. And I do believe season four, just based on the, how season three feels, it might be the last season. And I feel like that's fine. The show is kind of, if it keep, you don't want a show that goes on too long, you know, doesn't extend past its runtime. And I feel like four seasons really encapsulates what the show is about because, it even season three ends on uh to be continued, which is oh, uh, wow. which is not how they ended the end of the last two seasons. And so, because the last two seasons, you do feel like you do get like a full kind of story all throughout it. But um, because season one, if it was just a mini series, it would have been a perfect mini series. But they continued, yeah. and I love season two. I think it's the best season. But um. You, you do get a feel, where it's this season, you did not get kind of like a feel, because there is an existential threat to the restaurant, because like, one of the characters say, if the, if we get a bad review, I'm shutting down the restaurant, or something. Dang, this guy really doesn't want the restaurant to be open, though. No, he does, he just has a lot of money invested into it, and if it doesn't, um like, do as well, 
he feels bad about doing it, but he need he knows he, he he doesn't have a lot of money, so he needs to um kind of close the restaurant. And at the end of season three, we get we get like a we get we get we don't see the full review, but we get a bunch of words that say sloppy, inconsistent, and kind of overdone, which into a more of a bad review, and that that makes our main character kind of really pissed. And that's how we end the season. It was like really disappointing because it was such a big cliffhanger of like what's going to happen to the restaurant. So I'm going to have to wait probably until summer next summer because that's what they do it's funny that um all three seasons of the bear have released and they're, since like sever- season severance season one has only had one season and they released yeah. the first seasons released around the same time but um that's just funny but um i feel like this was a re- i give my ultimate tldr about this season i'm gonna say um really beautiful season it's such an masterful show in the in the way it does it's directing it's the most beautiful cinematography i think i've ever seen like a show ever and um it it's great like that it does get a bit too arty because like season episode nine just starts off with a character we just see a documentary about movies when martin scorsese directs it it turns out that the guy's just watching it on his computer it does get a little too artful at times it did feel a bit more episodic a bit more I guess filler for se- until we get to season four and more of a part one and part two feeling, but it's still such a great TV show and anyone who wants to watch it really should and pull the trigger. It's just a great show because yes, it's an anxiety feeling, but it's also beautiful and you see how the characters can be really happy and it's like, like some of the best on a show ever. And um, yeah, that's my review and I'd give it a B plus. A B plus for season four, but an A, an A overall for the TV show. Yeah, season three, by the way. Yeah, I know. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but um. All right. Yeah. What other My s- adventures? No, right? he has other solo things. Don't you worry. Um. No, that was really oh, yeah. a big thing. I watched. There is. I'm still. I'm thinking. This is. This is how far. I'm thinking of starring a TV show. That's where I'm at. I'm thinking of thinking of what I want to watch next. There's like an Fair there's like an Apple TV Plus drama with Jake Gyllenhaal that I think I might want to watch. Is it? Is it? Is it about a cylindrical pillar that is on a farm I that is used for storing That's grain? Nuts. I said Jake Gyllenhaal. Is he Jake Gyllenhaal in that? I don't know. You think All Apple TV Plus? Plot of style. Do you think Apple TV Plus only has one show? Yeah. Yeah. The Tetris movie. Ted Lasso. And Silo. And Ted Lasso. And Ted Lasso. And Stein's and Gate. Oh, and that show about... Um... They do not have Stein's Gate. <laughs> well, Ernie, why don't you watch your favorite show again, Stein's yeah, Gate? Yeah, watch Stein's Gate, bro! And the... <laughs> I'm gonna watch that just one day to piss you guys. Um, that wouldn't piss us yes, off. It would yeah. give us validation. <laughs> that would give us a lot of validation. Um, no, what about that show where Beck watches like The Office, but it's like about um about a game or something? I don't know. Oh yeah, um, it was called Quest something, Master Quest. What about or the really bad Bob's Burgers kind of show, Central Park? Okay, I just found out one of the Bob's Burgers actors was arrested on January. Did you not 6th. know that? that was like, oh, this is I didn't. Like two years old news, dude. <laughs> but I think it was. I think he re- finally got convicted yeah, or something. That was the news. They showed he got, back like, up in the news. Yeah. All right. Should I talk about what I watched that was separate to my myself? Yeah. My adventures with Superman time. Yo. Okay. First, we're gonna talk about Craig of the Creep, though. Guys, they decided to do something with this episode where he visits a random character's house and spends the night there. In this one, it was about divorce. Very cool. And the, mm. the kid realized that they if they can be in a universe where they're themselves, then they're okay with having their parents have been divorced. So divorce Very is cool. good. I mean, it was, it was either divorce or not be themselves as a person. Ooh, and they would right. rather be themselves than to live in a like fake world or something. I don't know. Good episode mm. though. Pretty solid. Uh, was... uh what else can I skim through real quick? John Mullaney, I rewatched New in Town while I was studying for my finals. 
New wow. Encounter is pretty funny. I think it's one of. I think it is the best. It might be the best one. Really, I, I haven't I, seen it other than the Baby J, so I gotta watch more of him. Yeah, but Baby like, J's pretty good. New in Town is when he's still doing cocaine, so he's more energetic. He's, he's more energetic. Uh, this one has like random drug stories in it, also. Like when he tries to get Xanax, that one's pretty good. He gets fingered in that story. Um, uh, I don't know. Is that one? I think that one's just really funny and really quotable. Like the like the one like the titular New in Town bit. Where he gets pushed by a homeless person. They say, I'm homeless. I am gay. I have AIDS. I'm new in town. Brilliant writing. Oh, I, I think I've seen that clip. I assume that didn't happen to him, but it's hilarious though, right? Is it on Netflix? That one's on Netflix, yeah. Well, no, I watched it on YouTube. The full thing is just on YouTube. Interesting. I would like oh. to watch more. I got to watch more John Mulaney, more comedy, you know? Yeah. I, I, I realized... Comedy, watching comedy specials is actually pretty fun. Yeah. No like, way, the ever, funny like, thing seen, is fun. I've only ever, like, watched stand-up through, like, TikTok clips. Yeah. But to actually, like, see the whole show gives you, like, a new perspective. Yeah. True. Beck watches just TikTok all day. All day. Come on, Beck. All day! Wow. Uh, yeah. An another thing that I watched, I rewatched Meet the Robinsons. That's a fire-ass movie. Big thumb, double thumbs up for that movie. Solid movie. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in a bit. I, I, the only thing I remember from that is like the guy is friends with his son, and yeah, that's the only. Yeah, thing. is that is that it? Yeah. I mean that that's definitely part of it. I don't know. I think I think the movie's just really good. I think it's slept on in terms of, uh, movies that Disney made in that era of Disney. I thought it was yeah. worse for some reason. No, it's yeah, it's a Disney movie. Um, but it's pretty solid, kind of lost in the whole early 2000s bad CGI. There's like four character models in that movie. It's great. I think Aiden gave it too high of a score. I don't remember it being that particularly good of a movie. Beck, well, you okay, gave, I have Beck. nostalgia for it. And also, you gave Inside Out 2 <laughs> 4.5 stars back. You, you guys fucking talk. keep holding me on this point. I am going to watch this movie Three times in three weeks. Then you should change I your really score. like the movie. You, I can give it four and a half. No, you can't. You have to give it actually a little bit less each time. That's what you should do. That is how <laughs> I'm watching. Well, you can move it. You move it down on the second go and then the third go back up because you're like, oh, wait, no, it was good. Beck, Beck, Beck. You can't have an opinion about anyone giving a, a wrong score on Letterboxd ever again until you change it. Change what? Inside Out 2? Yeah. You're saying my entire credibility as a critic is being destroyed, held down by my one review of Inside Out 2, the sequel to my favorite Pixar movie of all time. You mean yeah. the same Pixar movie? The of same? Of all time? Oh my god. Um, back. You guys are hovering at this point? It's not that similar. It's, I mean, like, it's similar because it's a sequel. I don't know what you guys were expecting. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, Beck, at most, I feel like Beck, at looking most. back at it more, Anxiety is a really good example of, like, joy from the beginning of the first movie, which is, like, overprotective and overbearing over, like, the emotions, which is, like, a really cool idea, you know? Okay, but the difference is that Anxiety did a hostile takeover and Joy was just appointed leader. And she was just the leader. You know who also did a similar character arc for from Joy in Inside Out 1 to in Inside Out 2? Yeah. Joy! The same character arc! It's the same <laughs> character arc! It's the exact same character arc! No! 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 no. She said she has a panic attack! <laughs> like, an... Beck, at most, at most, I'm only accepting a, a four, which is what Aiden gave. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, let's move on from that. <laughs> We're going to talk about my adventures with Superman next. Yeah. Let me hear about so, this Jack Quaid Homelander ripoff show. So last time, Superman got kidnapped by uh, Kara, and Kara's like, Haha, Superman, you are with me now. We're going to father and go 
go fix the fi we're gonna we're gonna make Krypton great again because the Krypton blew up and Superman's like no let me I want to go home. Him, him and Lois are broken so up, right? Him and Lois are uh, broken up. Yeah, but I mean that didn't really play a part in this episode. But Ow. Kara's like no Superman come back come back let me show you and they put on this headband that like shows memory. She's like see this is this this play this planet. Uh, we my father and I took it over. Look how prosperous it is. Look at everything that they do here. I love it at this planet here. So good. And then Clark is like, no, let me show you what Earth is like. And he shows like a memory of him playing catch with his dad. And he's like, wow, so calming. And then he, uh, then he thinks about Lois and gets mad. And then, um, grr, grr. And then, uh, Clark looks at all through all of uh Kara's things and all the artifacts she's gotten from all the planets and this photo of Jimmy she has and how she has a crush on Jimmy and makes fun of her for it. Um, and then they they Kara's like, okay, how about I'll take you to this to a planet that Krypton took over and we'll I'll show you how cool it is. But then there's an asteroid belt and then they have a snowball fight in the asteroid belt and they bond together as family. Oh. And then they go to the planet, and guess what, guys? It's completely destroyed. Nobody there. Destroyed. Everything is Ooh, bad and yeah. bad news. Like Tomorrowland, when they when the world ended or whatever. Oops. Terrible bad badness. And then uh, the robot uh, robots come. They've been picked up by her father because they went off course. And her father is actually not her father because he blew up. It's actually Brainiac. Uh, not oh. Brainiac. I Which know is that very, guy. I also know that guy. They keep pulling different villains from Superman that aren't like main Superman villains, which is cool. Well, I mean, Brainiac is a pretty big one. I think Brainiac is like, a pretty big one. He is a pretty big one, but like for, for a season two, he's pretty big. Especially now that Lex has been introduced and like the first season revolved around multiverse stuff. So I don't know. Sure. Um, but Brainiac is like, listen, Kara. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna fix everything. Everything will be okay. Kalel, I was the computer on Krypton with your dad and your uncle, and who's Kara's dad, who's dead. Um, come with me, Clark, and I'll show you that we're not destroying planets. And then he beats his ass with robots. One of them is um part of Lantern Corps, so it's so Green Lantern's been. Uh, like officially in this universe now and one of them is like a hawk is like a hawk girl kind of a thing hawk like girl. hawk girl hawk girl hawk back not hot hawk, hawk. Well, no but yeah she I'm is saying but hawk, hawk hawk girl or hawk guy depending on what version of the hawk person you prefer guy obviously okay uh so Kidding. clark gets his ass beat by these robots um, and he tries to beat them, but he doesn't, and he loses. Um, and then gets taken by Brainiac. And meanwhile, Kara is like, "All right, he's be he's busy. I'm gonna go to all the planets that I thought were prosperous." But then she sees that all of the other planets are destroyed too. She's like, "Oh shit! How did this happen?" So she has flashbacks. She was the one that de genocided the planets. All She's a murderer. She's a genocider. Wait, all she's of like, them? I don't remember. Ooh. I don't remember doing this. And then she gets like, she's like, gets like mind brainwashed or mind controlled by a brainiac, and is like, Kara, don't worry, honey, you'll be okay. We'll go save Krypton. And she's like, okay, sound sounds good. And her eyes turn gray, and she loses all color, and she gets mind controlled. No. And then, no. Um, and then what happens? She like. Oh yeah, and then but then she like leaves and looks at all the planets, and then she like realizes she genocided everyone and starts crying in the middle of space. And then a spaceship shows up. Guess who's in the spaceship? Lois, Lois. and Jimmy. Lois yeah. and Jimmy are both in the spaceship. How'd they get Whoa. a spaceship? I have no idea. That's probably gonna be in the next episode. But yeah, do we pretty know? solid? What? Things are ra things are ramping up. Is there, like, a specific line of comics that In My Adventures of Superman are following? I wonder. I don't think so. I think it's just pulling from a bit of everything. Because there's a lot of different characters in this. Mm. Speaking of Superman, we got a new look for, like, how Clark Kent looks in the new Superman movie. And he looks... He looks pretty good. 
Anyway, his hair it look his hair looked very much kind of like a wig in a way. Um, it's like um, it looks like he's a guy who's who. If I go to a rap battle, he's about to say word after every sentence I say. <laughs> That's crazy. Why would you say that? Word. That's, that's just really rude. Um, so yeah. But I mean, I'm kind of excited for the new Superman. I haven't really thought about it. I think it'll be good. It's under James. I'm Gunn. just gonna wait until we see like official, like stuff. Yeah. How do we know he's not leaking it himself? Yeah. Okay, but I mean, like, like the trailer is what I'm. What yeah. I mean. How do we know that he didn't leak the trailer himself? Well, there, there's no trailer leaked. How do you know he won't leak it himself yeah. in the future? Then I'll talk about it when the trailer gets leaked by himself in the future. You say, I'm leaking this. That's what I say when I have to take a big piss. Okay, let's talk about something else. Um, <laughs> smiling, about friends. smiling Friends! The last episode of the Tim season. Tim finally turns green. Wow, and you know what? He didn't turn green. What? Yeah, so the episode is called Pim Finally After Turns eating green. a mysterious artifact found in an ancient burial ground, Pim suddenly and mysteriously turns bright green. Um, at first, everyone is horrified, but eventually they learn to accept and love the new green Pim in the season two finale. Yeah, so that doesn't happen. What actually That's happens... A, it is really funny if you read the HBO Max descriptions, because none of them are right. This episode tells the story of a 34-year-old boy named Pim who sets out to save his mother at, on Mars after she's abducted by Martians. Wow. Wait. That's, that's like the movie Mars Needs Moms. So Whoa. true. So what happens in uh, Pim Finally Wait, Turns guys, Green? Wait, right? guys. I just got like a flash of the trailer for Mars Meets Moms for some reason. Like Beck did. Was I wa I remember. I got like a seeing that movie. Uh, like, I have like a traumatic flash. It's fucking flash. terrible. I've not seen Mars Meets Moms. Should I watch it? No. Are you I sure? think it lost. Like I think it has like the record for losing the most money in a theatrical release. That sounds kind of funny, actually. I, oh, I, also not, speaking of funny things, before we proceed, I thought about doing this for a bit. Uh, I need your guys' opinion on it. Reading the longest piece of fiction in history. Should I do it? That's like a What is the fiction, longest right? piece of fiction? Uh, it is a, uh, a Loud House fan fiction. How long is it? Uh, 16 million words. Do it for the bit. Do it for the bit. Do it for the, the bit. Thing right, is good. Aiden. Not, if I, I do, if I watch Dying how Asia, long 16 million words is. I see very many. I see about 16 million words a day. Have you watched The Loud House? I've seen like the first season and a half when it was airing. Well, you understand the ago. deep references throughout these 16 million words? I'll probably get it. I mean, it's not all Loud House. There's like Pokemon and Ninja Turtles and. It does, it does uh, they eventually go to the multiverse. Great. I read, like, I read like a page and there were like a billion characters in the one page. Like Matilda was there. From Roald Dahl, she was from there for some reason. It was kind of okay. Crazy. That sounds really stupid. I think you should read the first chapter and report back to us. Great, can't wait. What is so it? what is happens? It, in huh? Is it the longest piece of fiction? Words? How long is it? What is it exactly? Longest sixteen, how, 16 uh, million words. It is the longest piece of fiction ever written. Okay. I'm re I'll re I'm gonna research this as it's called I, the Loud House Revamped. You know what? I am gonna take on the challenge of writing 17 million words of fiction. Do it. I like it. Do it. Okay. Do what it. happens if Pim finally turns green? Why don't you tell us, Beck? So Pim brings a snowman to life, but the snowman is wait. I die. He has an exent existential meltdown. And Pim's like, no, I've kind of caused this guy a lot of suffering. Uh, but the guy wants to go to the beach. So they let him go to the beach in the cooler and everyone's happy. And Charlie's girlfriend is revived. Um, and then run over by a, a, a bulldozer. Someone knocks over the cooler and then the snowman dies. And it's sad. But then he turns into the ocean. Then it's and happy. Mr. Boss rides the ocean wave of the snowman 
and the end of the season. Oh, but you also have to forget he like ate a boat and then tried to attack, and then. He... And also, the 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 snowman was voiced by Dana Snyder. Yeah, I kept I DM'd Aiden and I was like, "Hey, this snowman kind of sounds like Scratch from Molly McGee," and, and then I he said, said "Bro doesn't know." Who... I did say that. <laughs> Or actually, I don't know if I said that, but it sounds like something I'd say. It so I does sound it. like something you would say. So I believe it. I probably said that. Yeah. Yeah, but overall, pretty, pretty, okay, pretty season, pretty season. Is it of better it, than season dude, one or worse? Uh, season worse one, I think, overall. is better. Yeah, season one, I think, is better. I think season one has more classic. Like, season two yeah. is definitely, like, this is the season two of the show. But season one is like, holy shit, that's good. That's some good shit. Like, do, every yeah. episode in season one has, like, 17 funny bits that you could quote. And then season two has, like, two per episode that it's like, okay, that's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. I feel like you do get that kind of effect when you get more classic episodes when there's a really big gap between season one and two. That, yeah. I think also, like, season one is they come in with more ideas and they have more time to actually work on them. Because people I, another, are, like, waiting. Yeah. Another thing is, too, like, with it being, like, so much of an out there kind of a show with all of the stuff that they do, they kind of ran out of stuff immediately. Yeah. Like, they just do a lot of, like, oh, we'll just make these guys stop motion because we did that in the first season, but now we're going to do it again, but different a little bit. Uh, yeah. Like, the most different thing they did was the rotoscope characters. But... They did other stuff a they little did, better. Like, they, they did puppets. Yeah. Joel Haver they animation, did. right? Yeah, but that's that's they the did. All right, next thing me and Aiden both watch. Do you want to introduce it? What is it? Isn't it all of us now? No. What There's am still I missing? one more show that we both watch. Did you watch Ruby? No. What am I missing? I can't wait for you to dread having to talk about Adventure it. Adventure Time? What did we Two watch? Two episodes came out. Thank you, leaving us what? on the hook. Aiden does not remember. This is crazy. What did we watch? He's the one that told me that he watched it. What did I watch? Aiden. Oh. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? Hell of a boss. Uh, we watched Hell of a Boss. I forgot because that was... <laughs> oh was... yeah, <laughs> that was like five days ago. It was not that I long forgot. ago. I forgot. I forgot. Are you guys Nickelodeon Sorry. now? <laughs> um. Anyway, so hell of a boss. Two episodes came out like this month. Pretty impressive tra pacing for them. Uh, they were both really boring. They were. Uh, the, the. I feel like one of the problems is like. I mean, the first episode kind of did have a B plot, but the second one did not. No. So it kind of felt like it was fully focused on the this one arc, and the yeah. arc wasn't really that interesting. I don't really care about Stolas. Sorry, guys. I wanted to see the imps kill people. That's <laughs> the cool part of it, I think. Yeah, they kind of sidelined the side characters in both episodes. Yeah. It was annoying. They well, not even like they didn't like sideline the side characters. They sidelined three quarters of the main cast. Yeah, I mean, oh, I mean, they're the good episodes. They're still good. Yeah, I think they boring. do have good music in both episodes. That's true. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's all we have to say. Yeah, <laughs> I think the buildup was longer than us actually talking about it. Well, I completely forgot that I watched them. That's how. It, that's how it be. And they take place yeah. in the universe. They, they were very forgettable episodes. It takes place and in the same universe. Kind of felt as the, boring. Takes place I mean, in, it's exciting. It takes place in the same universe as the Has Been Hotel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but like in a different. But like very style. confusingly, like I have, I still no, don't know I, how they're I connected. Looked at, I like actually looked at the wiki page, and I you like had actually, to look at the Wikipedia page to know how they're I connected. Fi I figure I now know how it works. They're just in a different layer of hell. Okay, why why can't they just move between layers? They can. They do. They can. They, go to, they, they do. Yes, they're in like wrath, and then they go to like envy, like all the time. To me, like Osmodius is in in lust. They go there all the time. Okay, yeah, but like has been hotel. They don't move between rings. No, they're just on the top level. Yeah. 
All right. Anyway, um, Let's talk about the boys in House of the Dragon. True. Yes. You guys do it. Wait, before we talk about the boys, I have one question. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'll do it. I'll do it in the middle between the boys and House of the Dragon, so I can like speak a little bit. Okay. Um. So the boys. This back the boys. Do, you to, do you want to talk about this episode or do you want kind to of a mid episode? It was an okay episode. Nothing. I kind of. It was fine. It was um, fine. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's kind of though that they that they said they had the most fun making. They did. Is this episode four? No, this is episode five, right? This is episode f- five. Five. Yeah. Oh, maybe I think they said they episode, had the most fun making episode four. I thought episode four. Yeah, I see why they had the most fun making that. That was the best episode um, of the season so far. Yeah, so far but episode not- five. So we had the whole thing of Gen V building up this virus. And now they're finally, like, actually interacting with it in the boys. They're like, okay, we need to find this virus. Um, so they go to find the virus, but every single vial of the virus is gone, except for one. And then they eventually make a heroic sacrifice and give up the virus. Nice. Um, but then Butcher's, like, kidnaps the side is like, I need you to make more of the virus. And so we see how he's kind of going on. He, as much as he will go to the light, he'll always go towards the dark way. And he's, I feel like it's going to get to a point where you're not really going to see uh, a final kind of um light side for Butcher. And he will end up really more on the outsets between him and the rest of the boys by the end of the season. And at season five, he's just really going to go his own way. No contact with them, really, is what I believe. Is personally my theory mm-hmm. because I really don't see how he can like continue to get back with them. The more he's doing this more heinous shit by kidnapping the scientists. Yeah. Like um. And you get a return for Stan Edgar, who helps to try to find the virus. Stan Edgar, my goat, played by Giancarlo Esposito. He's fire. Still wow. one of the all class actors of all time. Such an amazing actor, and he like he plays. This such in such a fun way where it's like they sort of have a reluctant relationship with him, but um they try to find the virus and as Beck said, they don't find the virus. They do this thing where it's like a kind of mocking D fifty two, where it's um Disney Expo yeah. for like um all the new Marvel and Star Wars and all those types of shows. Phases seven through nineteen. This is my question. Are these real things? No. No. It's fake. They, the, I deep, think they pay- the deep the deep isn't going to Atlantis and holding his breath for as long as he can. No, they're just mocking all the types of shows that Marvel does in DC. Like okay. Yeah. They um, did take over like the disgusting film tw- Twitter account. See, that's why. That's what I thought. I thought they were real because they were. He was posting about them, and I believe I try. I take all of my information from disgusting film. That's where I get all of my info. I guess you they try, sounded I- so fake. How did you believe any of them? I sounded real, like this one about really? the deep. The <laughs> where? Hold on. Where is it? Let me go find it. The t- maybe it was on debussing film, and you thought. No, it was no, the one. Hold on, I saw it earlier and then got really confused. Um, but oh, yeah. back, uh-oh. The Bear Seasons what? 3 and 4 didn't end up filming back-to-back due to scripts not being ready in time. Well, they filmed uh, Why did it affect me? I said early, I thought. You <laughs> said back. Um, but, um, okay. It still feels like a part one, part two, Aiden. Um, well. But anyway, yeah, so... We get, um, so we get, like, this fake kind of thing where it's all, like, we, so here we get, like, um, our, we get, like, a really small appearance from the two characters from Gen V. The Guardians of Godolkin. We also got Tech Knight, I guess, um, which is a third character from oh, that yeah, show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where, so, like, they don't really have much of a role at all in this episode except to show, like, they're really loyal to Homelander and they will do whatever he wants, which I think is just going to build up to this thing where it's, like, Homelander now feels like, you know, he's a really good father now. He's like, you know what? I'm going to be nice for Ryan. And we do see Ryan turn a bit evil with having the woman slap him, like, or having the woman slap the guy, like, eight times. Yeah, and so I feel like this, 
it's it's pretty sad because like you saw how good of a guy, but now Homelander kind of knows how to manipulate Ryan because like he's been having yeah. trouble before, and now this is not going to bode well. So now we see Homelander is kind of his peak like villain. He knows who he is now, and he's not gonna he's not gonna turn down from him because like now that he feels like he's conquered his past, he's going to he feels like he can control everything now, which is why he made all the guys. All the superheroes in the seven build in the room kill Co- Cameron Coleman, and um, we're seeing like this is his final form, I think. Yeah. Um. Then what else happens? Huey is feeling really guilty about killing his boyfriend's family, so he turns himself into the police. Huey, you mean Frenchie? Um, Frenchie, yeah. Um, but, um. And so that's how it happens at the end of the episode. And we, he gets a lot throughout the episode about ideas of penance and kind of um, forgiving, and he feels like he can't be forgiven. And um, so we see him really struggle with that. Huey has a really big arc this episode. Where, um, well, let's explain it back. Uh, so at the end of the ep- at the end of the last episode, it's like the cliffhanger is Huey. Uh, Huey's mom injected Huey's dad with V. And so we wake or we start this episode and then the mom's like, oh, you brought it. I assumed that you'd want to put it in. So I put it in for you. And then he was like, no, I didn't want this. And then the dad wakes up. He feels completely fine. But then he like can't remember where um, Huey's mom went. And we're like, oh, he's having memory problem. And then we he disappears and they find him and he, he is holding the heart of a random nurse, and we see what his superpower is. It's like the ability to phase through objects. And he's also now, like, completely forgetting who's who and where he is. So he's randomly killing so many people in the hospital. Damn. Um, and eventually, they're able to talk him down and, like, reason with him, and they put him out of his misery by killing him. Like, Damn. with drugs. And I believe this was like the final kind of um, it was a it was a final arc for Huey because Huey's always been like the child in kind of the show in a way where he's yeah. finally maturing now, and this is a really part of his character in dealing with his um kind of past, as I said, and like really kind of coming together because like his family is kind of broken from this, but he needs he knows he needs to come together with his mom to put his dad out of his misery, as Beck said, and this is like kind of like fulfilling a part of his character arc. For him becoming more of a mature person, and he he knows he need, he it's the hard choice to put down his dad, but he knows he needs to do it else because it's it's not going to work for him any other way because dad is going to hurt more people in that way. Yeah, and I believe that was the greatest part of the episode. That storyline was my probably my yeah. favorite of the episode. It was a pretty um, okay episode overall, but um, it definitely building for some more exciting things. I believe in the last three episodes. Yep. House uh, of the Dragon. Okay. No, Ooh. in mid. He did the th- mid. I already did it. It was about. Oh, it was that. Yeah. Okay. Um, House of the Dragon. This was such a good episode. I. Uh, it was an amazing episode. I think. Uh, the first like thirty minutes, when you see the reactions of the whole team green to, the murdering of the sun. That is like some of the best acting I've seen all year. It was great. So that's a bold yeah. statement. And um, so let me explain really what happened in this episode. Yep. A- after the end of last episode, we have the big cliffhanger where um, Jaharis Aegon, the king's son, son was killed by assassin sent by Damon. And in the start of this episode, Aegon is freaking the fuck out. Helena is super like scared and. Anxious and kind of PTSD ified, and um, Aegon's just like so he's he's met yelling and he's mad, and um, um, Allison really feels bad about what she um did um to her daughter because she let her daughter kind of get hurt by this. She feels really bad, but then Otto comes up with this like heinous yet insanely smart propaganda idea where they're going to parade the the child through the streets with kind of reattaching his the body the head to the body 
and they're going to say, Rhaenyra did this, guys, to get the realm against the side of Rhaenyra. And there's this moment where you feel like the the crate is the cart is stuck on like a thing, where you think that maybe the bo- the ba- the dead baby might fall off, but they don't do that. Just kind of to build up tension, which I thought was a really mm-hmm. masterful tension building. Yeah. And then, but Chris and Cole was feeling really shitty because while the this child was getting murdered, he was having sex with the queen. It's like what a real one. <laughs> and he goes up to one of the twin brothers in the king's guard because there was a twins brothers last season who one of them split to go to her near because they believed she was on the right side and he stayed with the greens and he said go to dragonstone pretend to be your brother and then kill the bitch queen and, which is rhaenyra Ooh. and it's like the, and it, he doesn't really want to do it basically and he says do it or else i'll, I'll fucking kill you you i'll do it do it or else it's because it's your fault that you because you let um you let you let this happen because you weren't watching the queen and and he said like i was watching the king and it was really Kristen's fault but he's really deflecting yeah wow and um so that's like that we build up that kind of arc where and then we see how this kind of death protrudes fractures on both sides of um the blacks and the greens because everyone knows on the black side that Damon fucking did this and they're all like you know you gotta do something about him Rhaenyra and then Rhaenyra really confronts him and says like you know you you feel like you still this throne is owned to you and you just like working with me so you could get to the throne he says no I believe in you which is so obviously not true Beck like he so wants that throne yeah. for himself but he just like he can't. Who doesn't want the throne to himself? He just can't like a- accept that, and when, and so he just leaves off on his dragon, and we don't really see him for the rest of the episode. But then this comes a great moment in the show where Eric, because the two brothers are called Eric and Arik. Arik works for the Greens. Eric works for the Blacks. That's very yeah, confusing. exactly, and um. He goes up to his brother at Dragonstone is protecting. He doesn't go. He sneaks into um, Dragonstone and is about to kill Rhaenyra. But then his brother comes at the last possible moments and they have a fight and duel. And it's a really sad fight because they're brothers. And you essentially get this situation where it's, um, they really they don't want to fight each other. But it's like this thing where it's like people above us are making us fight and telling us that we're enemies when we're just brothers, really. And yeah. show is kind of the split because they're kind of like a two pair, and the relationship in the show is a metaphor is about breaking the breaking apart too because the family is split into two, and right. essentially it's the lords are telling them they need to fight, and so they and so they fight each other, and so it's a really sad thing where one of them I don't I'm not really sure who kills who but one of them does kill the other, and then he says I'm sorry to Rhaenyra. And then he kills himself in like a seppuku kind of way. It's like yeah. end of the episode. It's like where it's building up to really big stuff. Where it's every episode is basically a counterattack to the previous t- attack, and just going to devolve into chaos and insanity from here. Yeah, um, I think another big scene that happens is Aegon oh, Otto, gets yeah. really mad at Otto because. Um, he he doesn't want Aegon to do revenge, so Aegon, because like he got gets he got rid like, of him his hand. He get yeah, it's like and now he makes Kristen Cole. Um, essentially was the worst possible choice for hand to the king. Yeah, because he has no political experience, nothing at all, and because they essentially got leverage with the kingdom for for um with the child, because now everyone everyone blames Rhaenyra. But now, because they were trying to get the guys who ca- who caught Rhaenyra, who caught um, who who killed his, the, the who, king's son, yeah. and one of them was a rat catcher, they kill all the rat catchers in King's Landing for this happens. Yeah, which is like an insane move because only one of them was really guilty, and yes, they did manage to kill him. They did get the guilty one, but. But they killed so many innocents, and I was like pissed because you lost our leverage with the with the people. No, it's leverage. And um, it's crazy because you know in the modern Game of Thrones world they use cat at least in season one of Game of Thrones they use cats, um, for catching rats, and that's why 
they use cats now because they got rid of the idea of catchers after that whole thing. That's very funny. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And, you know, in the original book series, um, Sansa kind of rom- romanticized the whole fight between Eric and Arik as, like, a sort of princess bride type of thing. And it was, like, they fought for days and stuff like that. But in, in mm. reality, it was just more of a gritty, brutal fight. And I find that really cool how it relates. So, to like, people. in, like, when when Game of Thrones was being written originally, they, like, referenced a lot of these events well, in, in House of the Dragon? Well, in the book series. Because, like, this is... Yeah, in the book series. In the Because, bo- like, George has kind of, like, filled out kind of, like, arts before he like fully wrote out the dance of the dragons but it's like they yeah. reference some parts of history because this is history now you know we're seeing living yeah history. yeah because you know they have an intros for house of dragon now it's like the tapestries and i really like that i like it a lot more than the other one yeah because we get to see like new histories of targaryen history she's like we are literally seeing living history with house of the dragon essentially which is a yeah. really cool idea and um, it's just building up to be a really exciting season. I, I I'm gonna say, I think it, it now because I really like the bear. I really like season three. I'm gonna say House of Dragon is probably my favorite show so far though of the summer. Yeah, this is this is my show of the summer so far. What, what is your show of the year? And is it Ted? Because mine is probably Ted. Show of the year. I don't know. I have to remember like. Oh, Arcane Season 2 is coming out this year, so no competition. Okay, but right now, because my right movie now, of the year, Fallout, it's, it's probably... It's House of the Dragon. Fallout was really good. I don't Over think it's Ted? As... Over Ted, yes. Crazy, yeah. bro. I... Over, All right, ha- now... over Has Been Hotel? <laughs> yes, Over Has Been Hotel. Wow. Um, All right, let's get into the two group movies. Yeah, the two group movies. Or, wait, two? Thelma. Oh, Thelma. Right. So, so Beck was like, guys, there's this old grandma movie. We should go watch it. And we're like, sure, let's go watch the old grandma movie. It will be silly and fun. And then Beck cried ha, ha, during funny the movie. Pop. I did not cry during the movie. <laughs> I would like cried. to end this notion. I was not crying. Becky, I was, was not. Becky, Do Becky not was say crying. I was. I was not crying during this movie. Becky, Beck it's okay to admit you cry. Do Becky. not be saying that. Beck, it's okay to admit you cry. You know, you don't need. To I did it. not cry. I am ending this rumor right now. I did not cry. Beck cried the entire time. He, he got sad the entire time, and we said, don't worry, Beck, it's not a real grandma, she's just AI. And he was like, oh, okay. But it's, wow, it's, it's not I, could, I couldn't grandma. tell she was AI. It's Beck. not an AI grandma. I was, I was just lying to you to make you feel better so you could stop no. crazy. Beck, it's okay to make you cry. You don't need to continue these notions of toxic masculinity. I did not cry. Do not gaslight me. I was not crying. Beck cried the entire time so okay you know what's crazy even like when the fucking the movie started he was crying his eyes out that was nuts yeah the opening credits really had me balling <laughs> out you know it, it was, i love the, the universal when, logo so it was much the part when the grandma didn't know how to use the computer and he was like <laughs> wow what a stupid bitch and it was he was crying when he shot the computer and he was like that computer must have cost a lot of money yeah you know I, I may have been crying, but, you know, Uri, he kept jumping out of his seat. He was so scared the entire movie. I only yeah, It was so once. crazy. Anytime, like, a slight loud noise would happen, he would jump out of his seat. No, Beck, now you're just uh, pushing your stuff <laughs> yeah, onto pro- him. You're projecting no. on me. Yeah, because I am not you. projecting. Beck, That's Beck, what was happening. Beck, you're a scared little baby who cries and jumps. It's true, it's true. Uh, so let's talk about the movie instead of Beck shitting himself. <laughs> wow. Um, so basically what happens in this movie is that a grandma gets scammed and uh, she goes to get the money back with another guy on their scooter. And the family is like, guys, grandma ran away. And they're the we better parts of the movie. Her. Yeah, they're the better parts yeah. of the movie. The whole thing is like her trying to prove to her family that like, she can still do stuff. That she's a capable old whole, woman. But the whole message is that you need to accept that sometimes you can't do everything. Yeah. And that's why she accepts help and 
all that. It was a pretty. It was a good message. It was also a really funny. It was a pretty funny, funny movie. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Parts of the family were pretty funny. I enjoyed those. Um, especially when they were like in the car and he was trying to make a turn, but they were like, "Make the turn." He's like, "I don't know the GPS," and that was kind of that was pretty funny. Yeah, the ways. <laughs> um, this grandma became a badass at the end. The villains were nothing, no, nothing, not really anything in this movie. No, 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 no. I, I'm just like you, Thelma. Together we can rule the world. <laughs> it literally was that. It literally was. He met the final boss, and it was an old guy, so it makes sense, because she's old and... It was an old guy with an oxygen tank, and he was like, I'm going to smoke right next to this oxygen tank. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's not, it's not, it was not, not, it's not really, like, anything that big a movie. It's just a nice, kind of, like, sweet, pretty funny, and kind of enjoyable movie you could watch with your, like, family and friends, like... I don't moment. know if you would and watch with it with your grandma. grandma. I don't know if you should do that. Why not? She was I'll a badass be... in the movie. Yeah, but then, like, the other half of the movie when she wasn't being a badass was about uh, grandmas being old and dying. Yeah, all her friends started popping off. And your so grandma sad. watched Cocaine Bear, so I don't know. I don't know either. I really don't. There was this moment where it's like, you know, the, the, the son said to, like, the grandma, it's like, you know, I accept that you're not going to be around forever, but, like, at least you're, like, kind of, like, around now. And Beck was fucking bawling his eyes I was up. not crying! He was bawling and, so hard. Me and Anna just look at each other and, like, bro, this guy. Oh, my, I was not. <laughs> we, we really did point at each other and said, this guy's fucking crying this over here. Crying? Like, I no, was I'm not, not crying. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. That's well, it was, right, it was a good movie nonetheless. Despite the fact that we had movie. a little baby crying next to us the whole time. It was a pretty good movie. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna... <laughs> so we had a little baby boy next to us. Yeah. Okay, kinds of kindness. Now this Alrighty. movie... Now this movie... This was, movie is this about movie. abusive relationships. In the three different ways. So, how about this? Yeah. You, you, talk, you describe the first story, I'll do second, Beck does third. Uh, can I do second, actually? I want to do second. Um, I can do fine, the, I can I'll do, do third. third, I'll do third, I'll do third, I'll do third. Because no one likes the third one the most. I don't, but no one wants to do it because it makes the least bit of sense. So I'll do it. Fine. I, I'll, I'll, take your, I'll take the one for the team. We have Jesse Plemons, and he's like, guy, he like crashes a car, and we're like, why did he crash the car? And we find out that his boss is like giving him like very strict instructions on what to do with his life, and he was trying to like kill the guy that he crashed into, and the guy was willing to die. I think it was some kind of life insurance policy. That's, like, my theory or something. Who knows? I don't know, but basically, this guy's trying to push Jesse... or uh, to push Jesse Plemons to kill this guy. So he, he, like, has the notes, and he, like, it's like, eat this meal, do this thing. It's, like, telling him exactly what to do all the time, what to drink, all that. Um, but then he says, no, I'm not going to kill this guy. So, um, the guy just completely ghosts him and Jesse Plemons realizes, fuck, wait, I kind of depended on this guy. And he starts begging to, um, have the guy take him back. Do, he'll do anything. Uh, but it doesn't work. And then he meets Emma Stone. Whoa. And they, they, uh. There was a really funny bit where he, he meets his first girlfriend by um, pretending to have hurt his hand, and he, like, tries that a second time, and it doesn't work. So he's like, you know, maybe I need to do it real. So he slams his foot directly into a concrete wall to try to get with Emma Stone, which, I mean, I would do the same thing to get with Emma Stone. Fair but enough. Fair enough. justified. So... Uh, he hurts his foot, and then they get together, and he's like, wow, you want to do a date this, this night? Uh, and then she's like, sure. So he goes to show up to his house, but she's not there. She uh -oh. ghosted him. No. But she, but she texts him, and she's like, you know, I got in a car accident. Uh -oh. And he goes to the hospital to check out on her, and the guy who was, like, his abuser is walking out, and he goes into his, into the girl... 
his and was like, yeah, I got into a car crash with the exact same car that you have, with the exact same car that you were trying to hit. And he's like, I'm being replaced. Uh-oh. Um, so he goes and he breaks into the girl's house, just to be sure. And something that was set up previous in the movie is the guy sends him a ton of gifts. And he sent, like, a broken, ba- like, tennis racket one time from the movie Challengers. Um, so he goes into the girl's house and he sees she has the same thing. Cause this is what me and Ben looked back. at each other like. Yeah, we both looked at each other and we started bursting out laughing. And then Aiden was looking at it like this. It's a very serious movie. I Aiden, was very serious. Aiden took this movie time. so seriously, and he's like the most unserious man I know. That's how you was, know I was invested. Like, ha- the entire theater started bursting out laughing, and Aiden was like... He was doing it like this. Yeah, so he steals the tennis racket, and then it's like, okay, I know what I need to do. So he kidnaps the guy he was supposed to hit with the car, and brings him to the um, parking lot of the hospital and does donuts on his, on his unconscious body to kill him. Uh, and then he goes back to the guy, and they're back in their relationship, and he's like, I'm proud of you. End wow. of first kind of kindness. Yeah, but you, yeah, he got laid by, Dan, uh, by, uh... He by... did get laid by Willem Dafoe. So cool. That yeah. was the first movie, which Beck forgot to say was called RMF, uh, The Death of RMF. Yeah. And RMF yeah. is the one thing that ties the three uh, together. So the first one is the they Death of RMF. They each have one character named RMF. Playing yeah. that same guy. Same guy. Same All right, actor. let's review these as three separate movies before we move on to the next one. What did we like about this first yeah. one? I thought so far it's I the best it was... one of the three, yes. I would say. Yes. I think, yeah, I think it was, like, mysterious enough, but also explain like, you could understand it at the same time. Yeah. So the other two don't follow. Yeah. I think, like, it being the first one, it still it sets up the mystery of who is RMF, even though they introduce him, like, at the beginning of RMF. They introduce, like, three other characters that have the first name R, and then two of those characters have the last name F, so you're like, well, maybe it's them. It could be them. But then it was the original guy, but I still, like, had yeah. that mystery. Yeah. And um, I would yeah. say, Aiden, you really... I'm at- not sure, like, my ranking of the of the three, because thinking about them more and more is, like, I'm liking the other two, like, with some parts of them more, you know? Yeah, I agree, yeah. Aiden no. described it well, where he described it I like- feel like right out of the theater, the first one is, like, the most understandable. Yeah. You get the entire thing all the way through. But I feel like two and three sit with you a lot more, and you can think about, oh, what was the message? Yeah. What did all this stuff mean? Um. Yeah. And so, and throughout all the three, they have the same actors and actresses. Yeah. That's and why we're not saying the characters by their names because then it's confusing. And Aiden, yeah, I, yeah. I cannot name you a single character name except RMF. I can say Raymond. I can say that. I forgot. Um, that's that's the first Willem Dafoe character, but uh, I can't tell. Uh, you. Oh, and Sarah is the wife. I can remember that one also. Um, Aiden, you just kind of Aiden, yeah. you just kind of well as like you calling it like the first episode, the first movie was like ripped out of like the old Twilight show. I thought that it was- felt it did feel like an old Twilight Zone episode with like if you just had like some Rob Serling narration, it would like fit right in there as an episode like an early episode just because it was like mysterious enough but like made sense enough and wasn't too outland just guy has his life controlled by another guy leaves gets said controlled life tries to go back something they also do throughout all the three is that they in whenever people are like talking about like referring to something else or in like the past or something or like flashbacks or like dream yeah. or anything like that they do black and white for which is very dream. interesting yeah which is a pretty interesting yeah. cinematography technique they did there, which I found was really cool. But about the first one, anyway, I think I enjoyed it probably... I don't know, as I grew with back, the other two really had a lot for them, and I thought they were probably more interesting, but this one was more most cohesive, connected yeah. story you could watch. It's like, that as itself is most understandable movie. It's like, if this was just a short film you saw on YouTube, it was like, that makes sense. It's just a whole movie within itself. The other two, harder to do that. 
But um, this one, just like enjoyable movie, I could see. It really showed me like, okay, Jesse Plemons is a really good actor for this one. Yeah, and it, I really hope he gets an Oscar for this. Um, but it was just we we got we got the first little taste of the what this movie is like from this first movie. So let's yeah. go to the yeah. second movie. Um, RMF is flying. Well, yeah. RMF takes a flight. Takes a flight. Yeah. Just, yeah. And um, this one we see. So in this one, the first one, Jesse Plemons is more of the star, and Emma Stone is more of the more of a side. This one, they're more equal footing, and then the last one is more Emma Stone main, and Jesse Plemons is the side. So for this second one, um, Jesse Plemons plays a cop whose wife, who's like a biologist or something, and yeah, like marine biologist, and she went missing on a trip. Um, studying pl- pl- things, and so he's kind of like he's been kind of weirded out ever since then. He's like doing weird shit. He's like, there's this the funniest moment in the movie where he's playing with the suspect's hair, and like the chief is saying he's playing with that person's hair. Like, no, that's not the funniest moment of the movie. Yeah, it's, it's he's at he's at, he's at dinner. <laughs> he's at he's dinner. at dinner with these two other people, and, and then one of them hurry. is his cop buddy. And um, it's like things will be okay. We'll find her. Like any day now, we'll find her because he's he just doesn't really know what to do with himself since he kind of um since she's been gone, I guess. And so he's all like, I want um at his cop and his wife has come have come to dinner. I want to show you guys a video and like, oh, we don't we don't need to see a video. And like, I want to show you a video. And then it cuts to a video of the four of them. Um, Jesse Plemons, the cop, and his wife and his. W- missing wife, and they're all fucking. And it's so like they made, a se- they made a sex tape, and it was it was fucking. It was like it was pretty. <laughs> it was fun. really funny, just like sitting in a theater with everyone and just bursting out laughing, seeing that. Yeah. And it was a pretty intense sex tape, you know. I'm gonna. Say, it was pretty full on. And um. Yeah, this Yorgos Latimos is like you know I don't give a fuck about you guys. I will show. Sex I want, you know? Yeah. True. Emma Stone, you will be naked in my movies. That's kind of a given. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, and so they're like, okay, we're just, um, please turn down the volume. It was like, okay. And then eventually they do, um, find, um, the, the wife and guess who's the pilot? Warmeth. That he's He took a flight. flight. Yeah, and um, so they find her, and like he's kind of like happy that she's back, but then he starts thinking that she's acting a bit too weird. Why did she eat the chocolate cake? She's doing these weird things. She hates chocolate. Ooh. She hates chocolate, and then like her shoes are too big for her. And she's like, she's hot, when the when they have dinner again with the friends, they're like, let's fuck on the table, and she's like, she would never fuck on the table. <laughs> And um, oh. so he starts thinking, that's not my wife. And everybody tells him he's crazy. That's, of course, that's your wife. And he's like, that's not my wife. And um, he, so he seems like he's losing it. It's like he's, he's doing all these weird things. And um, and she's just kind of have to deal with it because she tells like her father, who's played by Willem Dafoe, is like, you know, he's always been there for me. So I kind of like have to be there for him. Or something, cause well, yeah, but yeah. If, yeah, but that comes later. Yeah, that's a bit later. But um, essentially, we get we it's sort of set up because in all these types of in all the three movies, none of the characters really feel right or anything like that. They never feel like anyone in this movie is like kind of normal in any sense. Like um, no. you, I, I I don't know about you guys. When I was watching the movie, I was trying to find like who in the movie was like weird and who was like acting normal in the movie and i never found a single fucking person kind of acting normal i thought like oh maybe they're normal but then like kind of just turns down but maybe it was the cop the cop and his wife are more normal and those are the most normal characters or like the daughter in the third one yeah yeah it was kind of interesting to see who was like kind of normal and who was not because right now we get the situation where he's kind of maybe going just getting paranoia, and he's just, like, not accepting that that is his wife. But then, the movie starts to get kind of weird, or more, more interesting, more, like, thought-provoking when, um, so he goes, like, to stop, like, um, I guess, um, to, like, he's doing a routine, like, like, I stop for, like, people who, like, like, two, like, two teenagers in the car, or maybe it was, like, they were speeding. They're speeding. Yeah. yeah. Speeding ticket, and, like, you know, he says, like, 
just he was checking and he thinks the person's phone who was driving the car that's my phone how'd you get my phone she said that's not my, that's not your phone he's like but then the other guy comes out of the car and he says just chill out and then he shoots the guy in his hand and tries to like bite it or like lick it out or something and then he's like put on yeah suspended leave for that and so then yeah but the, like the whole thing set up is like uh his wife is like trying to get him to eat anything because he refuses to eat and then he thinks his wife stole his phone yeah and like the yeah and so then he does this thing where it's all like you know he won't eat but then he says i would like you to cut your thumb and serve it to me and then like we're like if this was like a normal movie this would be point where she says no get the fuck out but like because this is a yorgo slath in most movies like she said she does it and like weird thing where it's like we see and that's like a really brutal part of the movie where she cuts her thumb thumb off it was like yeah. really gross i know beck was probably was covering his face when, when it was oh on my screen. god because he's a little baby boy who can't watch things <laughs> yeah i watched it <laughs> i'm kidding but um so she does that and he's like why would you give me your thumb that's really weird of you and like, I think, and it's like psych, it's like psychologist, yeah, or whatever. And she, yeah. yeah, and then he's all like, and then so she, he, like, he says, I think he says later to her, "I gave it to the cat." And he's like, "But I'm, I'm still hungry. I'm, I'm famished even. But don't give me any more thumbs here." And so he says, "I would like for you to give me your leg or your liver. It has a lot of iron." And like. What the fuck is going on in the movie? He wants to eat the liver, yeah. dude. And so then she cuts out her liver and like she's like dying in the chair. And then the um I t we we assume like, okay, she's just dead. He's kind of a, a psychologically maybe abused her into like just hurting herself. But then yeah. the, another version of the wife comes and then they hug and like they dance for a little bit. And then you're like, what the fuck happened? And then the so craziest my... part happens. The credits for that sequence. And there's just dogs fucking and dying and get, well, hanging the, themselves and driving the reference a car. for that is earlier in the movie, she talks to her dad and she says, I had a dream where animals and dogs rule the world. That's oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, uh, yeah. And she says, like, like still, okay. that, that was, like, a really out there part. Like, after what so, just happened and they hit you with that, you're like, what the hell? My reading of this movie was that it was, like, an abusive relationship, and the guy refused to accept that his wife was, like, changing as a person yeah. and not staying the exact same. Sure. Um, And... I feel like the wife was willing to do all that stuff because it's heavily, like, implied that when she was, like, shipwrecked, she did resort to cannibalism mm -hmm. um, of, like, her, like, shipmate's leg or, like, like of, like, the person. dead people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I think she was willing to, like, go through with doing all that. And, like, I think the the ending just like wasn't real like there was no real wife it was just like a made up fantasy of what he thought would I happen i don't know how much of any of that particular story is real cuz i could accept like maybe the first one being really the first story being pretty real maybe the yeah. last one but this movie is the this movie particularly is the one where i don't know how much of any of it is real and more of a metaphor cuz like yeah. i don't know if he actually yeah. cut off her thumb or took out her liver it's more of a representation for i think painting. it's like yeah, i don't know i don't know who's like i don't know whose head it took place in if it wasn't real like is it from the guy's perspective or the woman's perspective yeah because like she the the one at the end she doesn't like the other version of him hugs the guy at the yeah. end and like she's like happy to see him so maybe it's like him, it maybe it represents like her like sh keeping her old self, and uh, um, yeah, and that Who refusing knows. to change. Oh, so, mm. yeah, but, but that uh, one was the most confusing, and I think like overall, the one that I wasn't the most of a fan of. Um, yeah, I would say I, I quite like this one because I just thought it was oh, it's good, it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, but I thought it was just—I thought this was probably the most interesting one to me personally. Just I thought it was just such a unique idea. I feel like yeah, I feel like everything clicked once you got like the idea that it wasn't like an actual imposter; it was more like 
representation. And refusing to accept, yeah. Yeah. But the third one has to be like, I I can understand, as I said, I understand maybe, I could understand both of the first one and the last one being real. Because it just makes, maybe the third one's more of a fantasy, the more the first one's more grounded in reality, I guess. But the no, the third one is so real. There's so much real stuff. That but I just right, feel, so what, it just what feels more. The third one, how about? The third one, RMF eats a sandwich. So uh, Emma Stone and uh, Jesse Plum, uh, they have Hunter Schaefer uh, naked, and they're like, okay, Hunter Schaefer, here's a dead person. Bring them back to life, and Hunter Schaefer can't do it. And she's like, wow, could I find another person? They're like, no, you fucking idiot. Get out of here. Um, so Okay, then- the funny thing was... Like, in all the trailers, she was, like, billed as, like, this huge actor. She's in that one scene and never shows up again. Yep. Um, so, anyways, uh, the Emma Stone and Jesse Plemons go to a hotel, and they sleep, and they drink water, and they drink water, and then they go to the cult place where they, where they see um, uh, Willem Dafoe and the Asian lady that I don't remember her name of. And they're, mm. like, they're, like sex a uh, sex cult and they're like hey oki can we go can i have sex with you oki please i want your daddy defoe dick and he's like don't worry my son we'll have sex later it'll be okay and they're like Whew, thank god so they have sex later but then they're like uh oh this jolly person might be impure so we're going to put them in the sauna until they faint and then she faints in the sauna and then becomes she's actually pure so it's so they cry into the... Because they taste the sweat. Yeah, and there's she's pure. So they, so Oki and Aki, they cry into the hot tub, and then everyone drinks out of the hot tub. They get their water That's the only water they can drink. Is their tears, which is yeah. crazy. Because like how, full water that, pure. how full that no, I think, thing I th- is... Based I think on it's on water reason. purified by their tears. Maybe. So it's, or rain water, and then they just cry in it. Maybe. Either way, they have to drink the crying water. And also, uh, Emma Stone keeps sneaking off to go to her uh, and daughter's house and throw water on the bed and sh- a shoebox for some reason. Um, so I think that was like actually just new shoes. It was trying to be nice. Maybe. Well, Emma Stone uh, is trying to. They're trying to look for someone that can revive uh, people from the dead. And they have to be a twin, and their twin like sibling has to be dead. So this one comes yeah. up. Yeah, and, and there's like some like height requirements, and like the distance between yeah, nipples like they and the need to have like the, they have to have the titty. They have to have the titty triangle. Um, <laughs> but uh, this girl comes up to Emma Stone, and she's like, "Listen, I my sister can bring things back from the dead. Trust me on this one. Here's my phone number." And Jesse Plemons is like, "Don't do that." That's we did we don't she's alive. See that throws a wrench in our plan. So just let's count it out. Um and then shit happens. Like I don't remember what happens, but she goes like to see her daughter or whatever. And they go back yeah. to the cult. What even happens in that little middle part? I don't remember. She um No, well no, I'm getting like... to that anyway. So she goes to the husband's <laughs> place. Uh because she she's gonna visit the daughter. Um and then she gets uh, drugged and then raped by her husband. And that was crazy. That was uh, crazy. Yeah. That was crazy. And then uh, she's now not pure. And she gets kicked out of the cult. And I felt so bad for her in that moment. Because, like, yeah. She, yeah. She lost, her husband's a date raper and with a daughter. And um, they, she gets kicked out of the cult because she's not pure for something she didn't even do. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But then she's like, I'm gonna get back into the cult. And it by, um, by by getting the person. So she goes to the person that brought her and she's like, Don't worry. I figured out the problem with the dead sister thing, and she kills herself. Um Okay, yeah, one detail that I really like thinking about is we get the backstory behind the sister where it's like she jumps into the pool and she dies, but then her twin brings her back to life. But she was able to bring her back to life because the twin was dead. Yeah. So her reviving her gets rid of her powers until the twin dies again. I don't think that's what... Was that what it was? Yeah. I, guess I think that. the powers only work when one of the twin, like, when the twin is dead. I thought, oh. that, she, I thought she was a veterinarian just because she had that ability. 
And I thought that it was just like for specifically they needed a person that had a twin sister that was dead. Oh, but because I think it could, I mean either one works. Yeah, I mean maybe it's dampen because she has the twin sister. Because Beck's saying, um, okay, because she died when she went to the pool originally, and then yeah. She, yeah. Re- she was brought back by her sister, and then she lost the power. But then when the twin dies, it reactivates the power. That's what Beck's saying. That's my theory. But I'm saying I don't think that makes sense because she was a veterinarian. What's that? have to do with anything the veterinarian well cause, so because after the sister dies emma stone like finds a stray dog and cuts its leg open and then she brings it so she can get close to the uh to the yeah. twin and like when she does it it like heals the dog like completely so does i was uh, yeah it heals the whole thing it was like it just had the the scars, cut, but it yeah. heals the whole thing so i thought it was the fact that she had the ability and she was a vet and that's why and like she's using it for good for animals I, don't, I guess yeah. I don't know. Wait, That's what was, I thought it was, but whatever. So she goes to the, she she goes and she talks to her, and then she comes back at night and she's like, "Listen, you help my dog so much. Thank you. Can we have? Can we talk for a little bit?" She's like, "Okay, we'll talk." And then she stabs her with the epipen in the neck and she faints and she measures she measures the titty triangle in her way. She's like, "This is the perfect woman to do it." And then she takes her to the morgue, and she's like still asleep, and she's like, "Okay." You got this. Put your hand on this guy. And the guy that is dead is RMF. And they bring RMF back to life. Whoa! Uh, and then Emma Stone goes like, mm, 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 mm. Yeah, she starts dancing during the credit scene. And it's it real- was so fire. Like, one of the yeah. best That was, like, the, the best scene in the movie. But then and the then, credits don't end. Credits end. The credits don't end. She's driving uh, the twin back. And she's like, all right. We're we're gonna go we're gonna go show those cult guys. Are you so ready? Are you so ready? Uh well, I'm so ready. You want some water? You want some water? And they crash into the boat. Uh, because there was reference thing that they were gonna go on the boat, and then they crash into a boat. Um and she the twin flies out the window and dies and she starts crying while she's dead, because I think she's probably alive because she can like revive herself, question mark. I don't know. Uh but Emma Stone is like, damn. My my ticket out of here, and then the movie ends officially. Really, that but then time. the post credit no. scene. But then the post credit scene. There's one more scene. RMF eats a sandwich and he spills ketchup on his fucking shirt. Oh, what man. a dumbass! What an bro. idiot, dude. And also, RMF was played by the director, so I thought that was cool. It wasn't the director. It was the director. It wasn't the director. Are you sure it wasn't the director? I'm okay. Positive. We can Google it. It's like takes two seconds. Okay, hold on. Kinds okay, of... but overall, I think this one is the most confusing of the three. Yeah. Um, like it feels like, um, oh, was it? Yeah, like, was it? I feel guy. like the cult is like supposed to show, like the like abuse between power, that, like, um, like belief systems and yeah, people. yeah, and then the husband. Is like abusing the wife by like date raping her, which yeah. also ties um, to the song, you know, the main song of the movie. Um, every I was, was made for love. No, no. What? Oh my god, well, sweet, sweet dreams are made of these. Yeah, yeah, sweet dreams. <laughs> Sorry, I've been watching too much of the Fall Guy. Uh, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ, like, leave, leave. Um, but like the songs of some of them want to use you, some of them want to be abused by you, which relates to like kind of the. I'm reading like a Reddit um analysis of this. Um, it's, it relates to like, um, it's a like, different Yorgos. Yeah, yeah. Where, where it relates to like the systems between like corporations, and kind of capitalism to like um people. It's like we like they control all the facets of our lives. Second one is like relationships between personal relationships and how people can build fantasies of 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 each other and um how that relates to like kind of abuse and um like how it causes like people to get cause like conflict when they don't when the idealized relationship doesn't fit to the reality and um the third one's more about um kind of the systems of faith and community and how it might not be worth the connection yeah the thing is like i get all of that and then it like ends with um i don't i feel like having like the woman actually have power 
like is crazy to me. Yeah, like it that felt, like it felt, made like the least sense. It, I mean, uh, the whole thing felt really disconnected. Like it was there was the cult part, there was like the magic part, and then there was like the family, part, and they all kind of felt like three different things that got smushed together. Mm. Like they didn't really feel related. Like I really don't know why they were the person that could bring people back to life. I don't think that was very clear. Yeah, I feel like they they did go a bit too far by actually having it because maybe the movie could have ended with her. We don't know if the guy survives out. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, or revives. Or maybe she just like kills an innocent woman. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of what she does. But she does I, I feel like that makes a lot of sense where she, she goes so far. Yeah. She Wait, all, all of them end with like someone killing, like someone dying like for love, you know? Yeah. Like, maybe, maybe those are the kinds of kindness. Yeah, there's also the, yeah. there are some themes throughout the movie, throughout the three movies, like the food, where someone won't eat a specific food, um, the blue car, yeah, the truck, and, yeah, the truck, yeah, and those are they they also along with our meth. There, there's those things, and um, but I thought it was like a really beautiful kind of anthology movie. It was a really great anthology, I would say. If yeah. I were to rank them, yeah. I'd go one, two, three. The way I think they were presented, probably for me. Mm-hmm. I think I um. I think one and three are know. too different to like. I think they're all too different to rank them as a thing anymore. Like yeah. I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about it, like they're not. I'm like, kind of feeling like two, three, one, or maybe two, one, three. Yeah. I mean, like, one and three are kind of interchangeable. You like two the best. I like two the best. That's yeah. fair enough. I might, but um, I think it makes me want to make my own anthology movie. Um. Uh, yeah, you should. Uh, I'll I'll write some things back. I'll make you do. I'll make you do some very intense things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm I'm looking at the cast right now just to like see. It. So yeah. So we know Emma Stone, Jesse Plemons, and Willem Dafoe, and all of like what he what they did in all of them. The yeah. There was uh, Bali, Hung Yeah, Chow. we know what she, we know what she did in all of them. Hung Chow, we know what she did in all of them. Joe Alwyn, he, he was he's the, the he's he the was guy the, in the car. He was the guy in the car, but he was also the guy that was the, like bidding the dead, for the dead, bidding for his the, stuff. Yeah, yeah. In the first one, oh. and the last um, one he was the day raper husband. Yeah, and then um the other one, Mamodo, uh, he was the uh, swim coach in the first one. I missed that. I thought they forgot to put him in there because I no, forgot. Oh, he was the doctor in the third one and the cop in the second one. Yeah, I do like how all of, like the side characters get like one really important role in each of them. Like yeah. he got he got the cop in one of them and then two side characters in the other and Joel Alwyn got the, the big husband. husband husband and then two random uh, smaller ones. Margaret yeah. Qualley got. I feel like Willem Dafoe like being the dad in the uh, second one is like his like smallest one. Yeah. yeah. Margaret Qualley got like um kind of the same level of kind of like background throughout yeah. all three. Um, but she was like at least a little bit more than what i guess joe Alwyn got in the first two yeah but um yeah no it was just a really great anthology pretty good metaphors for those types of relationships and the kinds of kindness it's a movie that's really kind of a think tank that you have to think about it more and yeah. analyze that can be forever everyone has their own interpretation own ranking of the different movies and um very great acting i would love to, i would love to see jesse plemons in in more stuff they actually announced that they're gonna Yorgos is announcing his new movie Begonia coming on 2025 with Emma Stone and Jesse Plemons wow uh, where it's about like um, yeah. two conspiracy people try to kidnap a CEO of like a company because they're convinced she's an alien so that sounds we, fun we got that coming in like a year and a half all right but I well, think let's move on well, to the I biggest just, I do want to though say that, that that was I okay. think it's my movie of the year now yeah kind better of. than Ricky Stanicki Better than Ricky Stanicki, or at least on the same right, level. So current things, Uri's favorite is Civil War, right? Yeah, but then I think this is a close follow-up. Yeah. A uh, mine is I saw the TV glow. This is my number three, which, which is, is a produ- which is produced by Emma Stone, which I found out about. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, and but wait, sadly, you- this could not beat Inside Out two. Yeah. <sighs> Feck. Really. <laughs> Well, okay, and and then Nicholas is Dune Part Two, which might just be his favorite yes. movie of all time, which is crazy. But nope, nope, a night at the Roxbury. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, until forgot. the end of the year. 
At the official ceremony, he's unable There's to... There's a ceremony? Yeah. Yeah, the ceremony. <laughs> okay, let's, ceremony. Talk about, let's talk about Ruibi real quick so we can get it out of the way. Yep. Alrighty. The summer... I can talk about some of Ruibi. Well, I don't want you to Because I know parts anything, about it. Because I feel like if you're going to say stuff, you're going to spoil it, though. Well, I'll, I'll just elaborate on stuff you talk okay, about. Okay, well, so the summer arc has officially begun. I got a Crunchyroll subscription to watch Ruby. The show is called Ruby. It's not called Ru Ru Ruby. It's called Ruby. Which is confusing. But why is it spelled so weird? Well, we'll get into that. So, for, so there's this first episode. This character, Ruby Rose. She She's at this... Okay, hold on. There's lore. So... Uh, there's this, dust. so there's this, there's, there's this thing called dust and it's important. I didn't really care, but there's bad guys and there's good guys and there's dust, which is important. Um, and the bad guys are trying to take it, the dust. And it seems very valuable, but also it seems like everyone has, I don't really know. So this bad guy, I don't yeah. remember his name. They're robbing so, a dust store. Shut up, Beck. So... I don't remember his name, so I'm gonna call him Cigar St Cigar Man because he has a cigar, and I don't remember oh, his name. So he's robbing a dust store with his goons, and Ruby's in the store, and Ruby beats all their asses except for the man, the bad guy, because because he got on a sp spaceship, and there's a lady who blasted fire, and then this other lady shows up and takes Ruby, and she's like, "Ruby, why did you? How did you have this staff?" And she's like, you all, you know, my uh, my Uncle Crow, he uh, was at the school and he taught me how to use it. I actually made it myself. It's a, a scythe and a gun at the same time. Really rad. And she's like, Crescent wow, Rose. that's crazy. And then this guy comes in. What's his fucking name? The, the dean of like this other school. He's like, hmm, you know, Ruby, we're going to skip you two years in school and you're going to come join us at this the at the school to hunt monsters where her sister Yang is going. And Yang is like, wow, Ruby, that's so cool. We're going to go to school together. And Ruby's like, wow, we're going to go together. And then that's what happens in the first episode. Uh, then the, yeah. second, the second episode, they get to the school. This guy pukes on, on, the, on the flight. And then Ruby, after her sister abandons her, runs into this girl. Her name is Weiss. And she has a lot of dust. And she's like, wow, you fucking idiot. You dropped all the dust. Don't you know how important dust is? And then this other girl comes up. Her name is Blake. And she's like, yeah, yeah, but you're a stupid idiot, Weiss. And Weiss is like, Arr, you are. And then they both walk away and really <laughs> sad and alone until she finds the guy that threw up. His name is Jean. His name is Jean. And he's stupid. Uh <laughs> And then oh. the episode ends, and that's the end of that episode. He is very stupid. So then the next episode, they they go to the like to the, they go to like the ceremony or whatever, and the they all all the, all the characters that we've met stand next to each other, and the head guy is like, "Hello, it's me. You guys are all gonna be here now," and everyone's like, "Woo, yay!" And then the lady we saw earlier, her name is. Is is uh uh Glenda Goodwitch like the Wizard of Oz? Oh yeah, <laughs> which made me really mad. A lot of no, a lot of these characters are named after fairy tale. I know that, like Joan of Arc. Yeah, I know his name is Jean Arc. It made me mad. <laughs> named Jean Arc. There's someone that someone yeah. is just named Sun Wukong later, <laughs> <laughs> and he's a monkey. <laughs> Anyway, so now Ru now Ruby's like, wow, Yang, what a bad day. And Yang is like, but it's your first day. It'll be okay. Let's go talk to the girl that saved your ass earlier. And they're like, hi, girl that saved your ass earlier. And then she's reading a book. She's like, get out of here. I'm reading my book. And then Weiss shows up and she's like, er, will you quiet down? And then the episode ends. So literally nothing no. has happened. And we're like four episodes in. <laughs> So what's the point of this arc exactly? Oh, <laughs> to introduce all okay, the characters I, very slowly over the course. Can of I ex can I give you like a one line spoiler of season two? No, like the end of season. No, it's really funny though. They literally just go like, "Wow, nothing's really happened." But does something really need to happen? Real life isn't like stories. Real stuff doesn't need to happen. Not what they say. That's crazy. <laughs> anyway. 
See, the next episode starts off with these two characters, one who's fed up with the other one. I don't remember their names. And then Ruby and Yang are hanging out. They're like, guys, there's going to be teams that are going to be set up. Yang, I got to be on your team. And Yang is like, no, Ruby, you got to go make friends. And then Weiss is talking to this popular girl. And she's like, popular girl, can we be on a team? And then John shows up. He's like, hey, I'm Skibbity Riz. Riz, Riz, Riz. And then he rizzes her up somehow after realizing she's the person on the on the cereal box and then they go to the <laughs> then they go and they're like it's your first graded mission today guys go to the end of the forest get the artifact and come back and don't die whoever you make eye contact with first is your team member and then they all get launched off into the forest Damn. um yeah so then they're all launched off into the forest and so, and somehow, by pure uh, magic, the two characters, Ruby and Weiss, the characters that don't like each other, become teammates. And then they don't like each other. And then John gets yeah. the popular girl. And then uh, that's literally all that happened in Are this episode. Are you talking? Is, 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 mm. uh, Pura is the popular girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's literally all Do that happened. Do you know her semblance that... yet or no? Yeah, I'll get to when they introduce a third magic system in the eighth in the eighth episode. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what's the second one? It's dust, semblance, and and, uh, and aura. That? They oh aura. Yeah. yeah. So nothing happens in the second in the fifth episode. Then the sixth episode happens. Yang finds Blake and they hang out. Ruby and Weiss bicker about stuff. Um, and then and then Pira is like. Come on, dude, f uh, John, you're so shit. But listen, do you know about Aura? And he's like, huh? And she's like, it's this, it's, it's like a shield inside of you. And he's like, oh, like a force field. And she's like, sure. So it's basically a force field that they didn't explain very well. This is a guy going to school to be a monster hunter, and he doesn't know like the one big thing about monster hunting. We'll get about that. And anyway, they show like the green guy fighting a and then his annoying girlfriend shows up or something and john gets his aura activated by pura because that can happen she can do that um so then the next episode happens where uh all of the team members are now team members and weiss and ruby are like wow you suck ruby you're a baby and ruby's like i'm not a baby you're a meanie pants and she's like Arr. and then yang and blake find the temple where the where the things are and their chess pieces and they're like wow we can grab a chess piece that's cool and then pira and and uh joan john they find a scorpion and she screams and the first funny joke of the show comes up when they when yang and only eight episodes in only seven episodes in the first funny joke comes up when yang and blake hear the screams of uh hear the screams of john and they're like oh no a girl is in trouble <laughs> and then they then they run away from the scorpion and so that's the seventh episode and then the eighth episode happens and guys things happen in this episode this one's legitimately good oh no so they 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 fight this they all the characters all eight of the ones that we have been introduced to all meet up and they all fight the big scorpion and uh this is when i noticed wait a second every single one of these guys weapons is a gun ruby has a scythe gun weiss has a sword gun blake has 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 a grappling hook gun that's also a sword um ruby has basically wonder woman gauntlet guns um yeah yang yang has the gauntlet she punches gun. uh one of the characters has a hammer gun one of the characters has they really liked combining guns one with of them has a weapons. spear gun one of them has a gun with blades on it his was the least interesting i like john because he just has a sword and a shield because <laughs> he's stupid he doesn't get a gun no but like the or the the cigar guy has a has a gun in his cane. They're all guns. All of the weapons are guns. It's crazy, and the guns don't do anything. It reminds me of the bitch from Rick and Morty with the guns. Yeah, 
Uh, but they fight the scorpion and the bird, and it's actually cool. They actually do a cool choreography and stuff. That is the one thing that I hear praised a lot for the show is that as yeah, yeah, the fight scene the fight scene was cool. And then they then they win and then the 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 headmaster guy's like, Congratulations everyone, because these four characters, uh John and and uh and Pura and whatever like Ren or whatever, the other two characters, they all got this rally. They got the the horse. So they are going to be on a team called Juniper. And then he's like, oh, right. Ruby and Weiss and Blake and Yang all got the same piece. That's all the main characters. And they're going to be on a team called RWBY called Ruby, led by Ruby. Not confusing in the slightest. So they are Team Ruby. That is why the show is called Ruby, because, uh, because it is Team Ruby. And so, Beck, you're ahead in... Have you watched season two? No, I have watched a two-hour, 45-minute H-Bomber guy video uh-huh. talking about Rowebe. Yeah. So I know what happens for about the first three seasons. Oh, just the first three. Okay, cool. So just the first how three. Many, how many seasons? And I do want to try to catch up to Aiden. Nine plus two plus another show and then other things as well. Wait, Wait are you talking about World of Remnant? I don't know what I'm talking about. There's another one. Wow. Like, you want to catch up There's to Aiden? Like, what they did was they made a side oh, thing no. called World of Remnant, is, which I, is all the world building what is stuff, ice, and that's scattered around. What is Ice Queendom? That's... that. I don't know what that is. Okay, great. I think that's after. Okay, um, well... Anyway. You also got to watch the, the DC heroes team up with Ruibi movie. Real. Anyway, so what happens, HBO. In, what happens in the next episode? They... They they set up their bedroom and Ruby falls asleep at the at class and then Weiss gets angry and she needs to fight a monster in the next class. What happens in the next episode? Weiss fights the monster in the next class and she kind of fails, but Ruby coaches her and then Weiss talks to like the prof- like her teacher and their teacher's like, No, I trust the headmaster on um uh for uh for uh for uh Ruby to be the leader and the headmaster is like, Ruby, I trust you to be the leader. And they're, then they reconcile at the end and become better friends than they ever have been. Great. Wow. And then the next episode is... Um, so it's, huh? How many fucking episodes are this? It, we're almost done. It's 16 <laughs> 16. Episodes. But they're each like five minutes. Some of them are five. Some of them are 15. It's very inconsistent. Yeah, so this episode, uh, John gets his ass kicked in a tournament because he doesn't know how to control his aura, and then he gets bullied. And then the bully bullies other characters as well. And that's what happens in this episode. And also we're introduced to the first fauna, which is an animal girl. She's a rabbit. Yes. This will be important later when they introduce racism. So then... (laughs) Okay, so... So then, the next, I'm so excited next, to hear you get into the racism first, arc. It's first, really fun. First, first part of this next episode, they talk about the history of slavery a little bit. Um, and the bully is bullying, and then he and John get held back, and then John and and Pura go to the roof, and the second funny joke happens when they go to the roof, and John thinks he's that she brought him up there to kill him. Which is very funny to help him help him in suiciding himself. Very funny. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. He like goes up. He's like, I know I'm depressed. I'm not this depressed though. <laughs> and she's like, Here, I'll help you because clearly you're bad. And he's like, What? Do it. I actually forged my transcripts. I'm actually garbage at this. I lied to be at this school. And she's like. Oh, Cool, and then the bully heard it all, and now he's bla- being blackmailed. Very bad. No. So then everyone is like, wow, where's our leader, John? And he's like being blackmailed, and then he comes to the room, and Ruby's like, hey, John, how are you doing? And he's like, you know what? I'm not very good at being a leader. And Ruby's like, nope. And he's like, what do you mean? And he's like, nope. It's like, Ruby, I can't talk to you if you just keep saying no. She's like, nope. It's like, Ruby, I'm having, I'm trying to have a a conversation about my feelings with you. Can you please recuperate and help me through my problems? She's nope. And then so then they go to the forever fall where it's always fall in the forest. 
and he has to go collect and John is forced to collect jelly for the other team. And then the other team is like, we're going to throw it. One of the jellies at, uh, at, um, at Pura because we hate her. And then we're going to throw wasps at her because we hate her. And John is like, no, we can't do that. And then he throws the jam at the bully. And then, then the monster. I feel like I'm in a Nicholas Silo moment right now. (laughs) We're almost done. No, this is very important. We're almost done. Uh, So then. Hurry, get ready for an entire summer of this. Yeah, so then John. Are you ready, Hurry? It's a weeby summer. (laughs) Then John fights a monster. And then they introduce the third magic system. Now, where they previously didn't explain stuff. So Ruby can run really fast. Weiss can make glyphs somehow. And then Pura can move. Ma- she's Magneto. Magnetism. She's Magneto. And she's what? like, this is. No, this polarity. Is, this is my. The semblance is semblance. polarity. Semblance. They, and then they introduce the third magic system called Semblance, which is like something everyone could do, maybe. I don't know. Why did you? There's a fourth one. There's a fourth one later. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait for the fourth magic system. Anyway, he stands up to his bully, and then Pura's like, "Here, I'll train you." And then he's gonna get trained by Pura now because he feels like he can ask for help now. So then the next episode is like, "Oh wow, some other town is coming into town. Let's go greet them," says Weiss. And then Weiss is like. And they find like a broken in building, and there she's like, "Wow, must have been those dirty white fangs." And Blake, Blake is like, "Ew, you can't just say that." And she's like, "No, I, I can say it. They're, they're, they're terrible people." And Blake is like, "Ew, that's prejudice. You can't say that." Wait, do we have Weiss's like family history? Uh, yeah, that's this episode. And then Sun Wukong shows up, and they're like, "Wow, what a delinquent!" And then they find this girl named Penny, and she's just like a creature. Uh, and then, and then Weiss is she's like, like a robot. Is she? No, she like acts like a robot. Oh, but then Weiss is like extra racist. And then Blake lets out the fact that she was part of White Claw and then she runs away. And then she takes her bow out of her hair and it turns out she's a kitty cat. Oh, oh yeah. I forgot to explain White White Claw is made up of only fauna, which are the animal people. Yes, yeah. only fauna. And then, then they, then it turns out that Blake is actually with uh the monkey guy, whose name is Sun Wukong. Wow. And then yeah. the last wow. episode of the season, uh, Blake explains that she was a part of White Fang because her father, or because of, uh, she was a part of it when it was like peaceful protesting, and then some guy took over, and now it was evil protesting where they were like raiding stuff, and then she left. And then her friends are looking for her. And then Penny shows up and then they all leave. And Blake and Yang are looking for them. And Ruby talks to Penny or something. And then Blake and Blake and uh, Sun Wukong go to where they think the dust is being taken to. And they find White Fang and they find Cigar Man. And she's like, no, White Fang would never work with a human. And then she attacks the Cigar Man and then... An explosion happens, and Ruby goes and finds them, and then Sun Wukong starts fighting, and his power pole extends, and then it becomes nunchucks, and then there's so many guns that are other weapons that are other... And then Penny shows up, and she has swords that come out of her back, and they're, like, tethered to her, and she does sword stuff, and it also is a laser, so it's also a gun. <laughs> wow. And they fight the guy, and they explode the ships, and then he leaves, he escapes, and Weiss is like... Weiss comes up to Blake and she's like, Blake, I don't fucking care that you're black. I don't care. All right? I don't give a shit. And so that's the heartfelt apology. Yep. And then they tease other villains also at the end. One that can do fire and then two PNGs that slowly slide oh, into frame. <laughs> that is such a funny gift. <laughs> <laughs> the two PNGs that's yeah. slowly okay. in the frame that right. are the main. We need to explain a couple things to you. Okay, no, so now let's like explain in... the plot. Uh, the plot's all over the place, and nothing happened in the first season. Uh, but the main thing that stands out is that there's garbage writing, and the animation is worse than like a TF2 FMV. And the Uri, vo- 
I need you to look up a clip of Ruby and hear this voice acting. Because that is the main reason I'm not watching the show. Because of the high pitch <laughs> overacting of all the characters? Really? Yeah, it's... <laughs> Why that, I... but hurry, I, I want to explain to you. This was like, wait a minute, a, I gotta watch like this a clip. Web... Okay, yeah. <laughs> she took the headphones out. <laughs> 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 oh, you can see it in his face. Yeah, here, to make it up to you, I'll send the cool fight scene from episode. In, uh, so that everyone can see it, because it is actually cool. Yeah, the fights... What the like, fuck um, is this show? It's terrible. The animation is garbage. Uh, the so voice acting is... Any background terrible. character is just a black shadow. Until they... Because the, because it costs them too much to model. Yeah, them, so guess. this was like a web series that yeah. was like made by like a, like a YouTube channel. So like... It, it's very indie, so it's it's it feels very bad to be bullying them, but it is really bad. Yeah, <laughs> considering it's indie, that's no, but they are owned by Adult Swim. This is before yeah. they were bought out by Warner. This was like it. on YouTube. Do like, we know when Rooster Teeth was bought by Warner? I don't remember when. Uh, when was Rooster Teeth bought? By Warner Brothers. Let's see. Google, what do you have for me? 2022. Oh. Yes, that's like recently. Not, nowhere close. Recently. Andy, you're, gonna to, you're gonna have to suffer a few more seasons of it being terrible. Uh probably all the yeah. seasons, I think. Well, until I mean, I've seen clips from later seasons and it looks better. Oh no, I've seen I've seen images of later seasons and the character designs, and it looks actually Good animation wise. Yeah. Or at least I think much they got better. more budget over time. Yeah, but right now it's it's doggy it's doo doo mid tier. I feel like yeah. if it had better animation, the show would like jump up to leagues better, but it's just hard to watch a lot of the time. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna give some backstory I know from the H Bomber guy video okay. where it's the fight scenes were quite literally made separate from the entire show. That makes sense. Like, they literally sent one guy to make all the fight scenes because he was good at doing the fight scenes, and they built around the fight scenes. That makes sense. The fight scenes are good. <laughs> they can they can do good stuff. I mean, yeah. like, all the weapons are cool. I mean, I don't really like that they're all... Some of them are good. I like the scythe yeah. gun. I like the hammer gun. I like the the power pole nunchuck guns, but they don't all have to be guns. Come on. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll all see right. you. I'll see how this show gained such a following. Because it is like a cult I don't know anime. how this has such big of a following. It is like a cult anime, so I don't know how it, how it ended up like this. Yes. I will attempt to catch up to you and maybe we can do like a it's so week. easy literally season one is like two hours long i know and then i'll pro i'll try to watch through season two this week and we'll yep. report back next week but we'll see how hard it gets yep. and we'll see if i can get through season three as well i might have time yes to this week and once we get to season three i don't know what happened great so. that's awesome well i guess that's all we have to say for this episode all right that's all we have to say watch the Weeby fight watch. scenes yeah, independent watch. of the actual go watch, show. Go watch Kinds of Kindness. That's go watch Kinds of Kindness. Yeah, go watch Kinds of Kindness. Like, All right. Please do, Always not, use Celsius. please do not cry in the theater like Beck, like he's yeah. a little oh baby my God, boy. Shut up. Yeah. Always yeah. use Celsius. Right. Bye. Bye. Always use Celsius. Bye. Bye.